from the campus of East Stroudsburg University in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, it's the Millersville Marauders versus the East Stroudsburg Warriors, sponsored by Chevrolet. America is on the move, and Chevrolet is supplying the wheel. Chevrolet and you taking charge. And by AC Delco, General Motors Corporation, AC Delco is the way to go. We're live at Isla Martin Stadium in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. And here they come, the Marauders of Millersville University under Dr. Gene Carpenter, who's in his 13th year. He has won 68% of his game since he's been there. He's the eighth most successful coach in Division II. And here are the PSAC Eastern Division graphics. The standings, East Stroudsburg is tied for the lead with Bloomsburg. Millersville, the opponent today, is in second place. And it's a big battle for that top spot in the PSAC Eastern Division because the winner plays the top team in the Western Division for the state championship. And the host school, East Stroudsburg, the Warriors. Denny Dowds is the head coach there. He's in his 10th year. He has his team off and running with a 5-1 and one overall record. There's Denny right now. everyone, I'm Charlie Neal along with Steve Grody. And when you look at this game, we talk about how we saw the standings already, first of all, Steve. And it's a very pivotal game as far as that Eastern Division of the PSAC possible Eastern Division title. And we'll be back for the opening kickoff. It's the Marauders against the Warriors live coming up next. The win should not be a factor. And it's a normal fall afternoon here in the Pocono Mountains. Just a beautiful day. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Football, it's a little cold in the booth. <laughs> Millersville's will kick off. East Stroudsburg's deep men are Chris Garrard. As you look at the day's officials, David McDougal is the head referee. The umpire, Mike Simcheski. James Rowe is the linesman. Nick Trainer, the line judge, Bill Buchanan. And the rest of the crew there, along with Tom Compton. Kicking off for Millersville University will be Andy Brubaker. We'll be wearing number 10, a senior from Willow Street, Pennsylvania. And as I mentioned, the deep men for East Stroudsburg, number 34 on the far side, is Mike Bond. On the near side will be Chris Gerhardt. Both are freshmen. Both played high school ball together. The kickoff by Brubaker. It'll be taken by Gerhardt at about the 10. He's up to about the 25-yard line. They'll mark it at the 26-yard line, where ESU will take over first down and 10. Their quarterback, as I mentioned, is Moranic. And let's look at the backfield with him. Dell Walker, Dan Duck gets to start at fullback today. The wide receivers, Bishop and Scott Benoit. Up front, he has a line that averages 223 pounds. There are no seniors on that up front line. I should say there is one senior. That is the right tackle, Dan Cobol. First down and 10, East Stroudsburg. Man in motion is Benoit. On first down, back to pass, Baranek rolls left, has room, decides to run. He's out to the left side, and he's going to be run out of bounds by Jim Cassidy, the strong side linebacker, after a gain of about six yards on the play. It'll be second down and four, the defense for the Marauders, the defensive line that averages 220 pounds, one senior up there, and that is Warman. The linebackers, Cassidy and Pynchon, a junior and a sophomore. And the secondary, three seniors. The only sophomore is Raber. Second and six. The pitch. And this goes to Walker. Walker, close to the first down, but it'll be dropped short of a first down. And Hagen was the man who came up to make the stop. He is the nose guard. And Moses Alston, number 35, keep your eye on him playing the strong safety in the, in the defensive backfield. Considered a pro prospect, he was the one that came in and put the big lick on at the end, made sure he didn't fall forward for extra progress. It'll be third down. We'll call it two. The ball just shy of the 35-yard line. They mark it at the 34. Walker resets. Benoit split wide to the right. Bishop wide to the left side. Short drop and will not get the ball off Baranek. And it was Hagen, the sophomore nose guard, who has six sacks coming into today's game, coming up with the stop. 
Let's take a look at how this happens. It was supposed to be a quick out pattern. The defender was in good position to make, make the interception. There you see the rush comes in. Just a good defensive play. Coyne is the deep man to receive the punt from Pingator. Not a good punt. It comes to an up man, Raber. And Raber is across the 40 and out at about the 43-yard line. So the Marauders, after a 33-yard punt, will take over first down and 10. And it's a no score here in the first quarter at East Stroudsburg. 45-yard line, their first possession of the afternoon at the 44. Kaplan down the line, hands off straight ahead, and it goes to Stonewall. Make that coin, I believe, on the carry, and it was Fallenberg and Calamia who came up to make the stop. As you look at the offense of the Marauders, led by Greg Kaplan, Stonewall and Coyne are his backs. Westmoreland and Andreev are his receivers. Up front, an offensive line that averages 223 pounds. The only senior is El Hodge, and he is the guard. It'll be second down. Eight yards to go. Delay draw, and it goes to Stonewall. He's across midfield, down to about the 49-yard line. Rick Stonewall, all-time rusher and score at the school. There's the defense for the Warriors. And that's the strength of the defense. Those right linebackers. There, the linebackers are the definitely the best in the conference. They play a 4-4. Their line average is 233 up front. There are no seniors up there. They run three defensive backs. It's third down and four. Ball right at the midfield strike. Kaplan rolls left. Decides he wants to run. Cannot get away from Calam Calamia, the junior from Norristown, Pennsylvania, along with Reichenbach. He's a good linebacker. He's one of the best. In fact, Millersville admitted that Miss, he's the best they've seen all year. He's the premier linebacker in the conference, if not in all the East in Division II. So that'll bring on the punter from Millersville. That will be Andy Brubaker. He handles all the kicking. High kick, fair catch being signaled for and made by Mike Bond just at about the 20-yard line. And so that's where East Stroudsburg will go to work for the first or no, second time this afternoon. 11 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter. There is no score. Berg with the pass on the outside, and this is to the tight end, Kelleher. Kelleher dropped by Brown, Norman Brown, after the reception of about two yards. Well, Kelleher replaces Ernie Seegerst, uh, who was injured with a knee in, against Montclair. Kelleher started for the first time last year, as you can see on, on that instance anyway, uh, a pretty decent pair of hands. Second down, the ball spotted at about the 23-yard line, make it second and seven. Actually, those chain markers on the far side over there are, I thought they started at the 20, so he has about second and eight. And as you look at Baranek, back to pass, has to complete the Benoit. Benoit falls down at the 35, but he picks up the first down. Norman Brown, the junior from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, made the stop. But it is a first down. Benoit came from the far side of the field. The only th they run so many drag patterns, they run them very successfully. The only way that you can run this type of a pattern is if you get excellent, excellent uh, pass protection. This there is what the safety sees. This is what the safety sees right here. Now, there's two receivers in the flat, and you can see the three defenders on the left side of the screen. The quarterback is just so good at picking out those secondary receivers and reading the defense. Bishop in motion, 13 yards on that last play. Fake out to the flat, and he has it complete out of the backfield. This is Dan Duck, the fullback, and we have a penalty marker down. Well, this, Dan Duck stopped by Moses Austin, the senior. Well, this had to be a pretty obvious penalty. I mean, two flags went down. It's going to be against East Stroudsburg. Let's listen in. Clip. Oh, we got a clip. East Stroudsburg. First penalty flag of the ball game. The options by David McDougal, the referee being explained to Scott Warman, the senior. I think that was an excellent indication of how well Baranek knows his offense. They they did a kind of a Fran Tarkington turnaround scramble. As soon as he turned around, he had a def defender right in his face. He knew exactly where his receiver was going to be. In fact, threw the ball without even looking. It was a good offensive play. The penalty will negate it. Go first down. 
So it's still first down, but the ball will be marked all the way back just shy of the 30 at about the 28-yard line. It'll be first and 18. Again, Baranek scrambles, throws. Wide open. Walk out. He should go all the way. Touchdown. Dale Walker. His second touchdown reception of the year. point attempt by Pingator. He's 19 for 21 in this department this year. The kick is up. And it is good. And let's look at that 72-yard pass play again. Well, Charlie, you come on to campus, you get prepared for a game. I, w I still can't figure out where he came from. He started out as in the right halfback position. Now look at this throw, completely off balance. And as you'll see, there are two receivers out there. They isolated the deep back. He had two people open. It was just a perfectly thrown ball, well executed. This passing attack is everything <laughs> it, it was built, built up to be so far. Yes. Great addition. Yes, indeed. It's amazing how the flip of a coin can possibly turn a, uh, a franchise around, and that's how Houston got Ralph Sampson. Pingator to kick off. Millersville trails 7 0. This will be Stonewall at the 1 to the 10. And still on his feet, spinning across the 15 to about the 17, 18 yard line. Rick Stonewall was a kickoff returner. Ran one back for a touchdown this year. He's averaging something like 40.8 yards per kickoff return. An early indication of the quick striking offense that East Stroudsburg possesses. On the other side, Millersville offense, they run out of that split back. They run the veer option. It would be their goal in this game to keep the offense on the ball, sustain drives to keep the other offense off the field. Kaplan. Stonewall trying to turn the corner, does. Still on his feet and run out of bounds on the far sideline at about the 20-yard line. Reichenbach was the man who ran him out. Let's look at the defensive pursuit. We talked about Reichenbach already. You'll see him in the right side as your picture as the guard misses the block. He possesses great speed, tremendous agility. He's simply the best linebacker in Division II on the East Coast. It is second down. Eight yards to go. Straight ahead with the fullback, Coyne. Coyne, maybe a yard. Stottleberg, along with Camp, on the stop. The left tackle in the end. We talked about Ricky Stonewall. Realized that in 1981, Bob Coyne was the fifth leading rusher in all of Division II. He had a very bad thigh. It was ineffective all of last year. Um, We'll see how he does today. Third down and seven. Westmoreland, their good wide receiver, flank wide to the left. Kaplan back to pass. Looks for Westmoreland, and he can't get a... Oh, he caught that! It was intercepted. Intercepted by Bobby Dodd. His fifth interception of the year. He is number two in the conference coming in in interceptions. And let's look at it again. Now take a look at from the end zone camera, you'll get an idea of the pass pattern as it develops. There was a receiver a little bit more open in the right. You can see that he tries to uh, force it in here, tipped by one, maybe two different people. Watch it. This is a great pair of hands by Dodd here. Four interceptions coming into the ball game. Make it five. Big play. This is when the Millersville defense has got to stop the offense. Most definitely. It is 7-0. East Stroudsburg, they have the ball in Millersville territory at the 48-yard line. Their third possession of the day. Their first possession ended in a punt. Their second one with a 72-yard touchdown. This is their third possession. Benoit on the near side. 
Bishop to the far side. The backs are in an eye. Walker is the second back. And they give it to Walker. Walker has running room. And he has a first down to the 35-yard line before John Clemens brought him down, along with Costelli. Let's take a look at this from the ground level. I think you're going to see an excellent block by the pulling guard. Corson blocks out on the end. That's the, that was the block that sprung, sprung it wide open. Now it's just run north and south. Corson became a starter after the, he's a junior now, after the fifth game of his freshman year, and he's held down that position ever since. It's first down, ball shy of the 35 at about the 36-yard line. The pitch to Walker around the left side this time. Has running roll and is down on the far sideline after a gain of about nine yards on the play. Moses Austin, the senior from Camden, New Jersey, and Jim Cassidy, the sophomore from Norwood, Pennsylvania, on the stop. When you have great running backs, it's generally because they're getting great blocks. This time, Dan Duck, the freshman fullback, leads the way, takes out the, uh, the main tackler, and it's simply uh, <laughs> a race to catch up now. Second down one. Bishop to the side. Benoit in motion. On second and one, they want to go to the air. They throw incomplete, intended for Benoit. But it was a little bit overthrown. Jeff Raber, the sophomore from Cadoras, Pennsylvania, was covering on the play. And Benoit is quite a story in himself. And I'm sure he'll show you some of his talents as the day wears on. He needs 10 receptions and 222 yards to tie the school season record. He already has the career record. Well, you know, for two years he played bridesmaid to Bob Menez, the great other great receiver that they had. Now he's certainly coming into his own. Third and one. And the pitch to Walker. He has the first down. Carried a couple people with him. Jim Cassidy was one of the men on the stop, along with Warman, the, the, the defensive end. Let's take a look at this last play. This was the uh, ineffective uh, intercept. This, this pass was incomplete, but, you know, it's a little unusual to uh, see a quarterback throw from this kind of a set. Generally, they'll teach you to put both feet on the ground, get set, and rifle the ball in there. Uh, most quarterbacks can do that. Certainly an asset to be able to throw on the run off balance. In fact, this was the stance he had when he threw the touchdown pass. It is a first down. The ball is at the 26-yard line of Millersville. First down and 10. We're in the first quarter. 8.02 is the time remaining. 7 to nothing. East Stroudsburg. This is the 35th meeting between these two schools. Salzburg leads the series 25 to 9. They've won three of the last five games. Walker goes in motion. Here we have illegal motion on the line. Werner, the left tackle, the sophomore from Pine Grove, number 52, moved a little bit prematurely. So we're going to have illegal procedure, and they'll move it five yards back to the 31, where it'll be first and 15. As you look at Denny Dowds in his 10th year, he is 5-4 and four against Millersville. First down. First and 15. First down, 15. Rovman is in as a wide receiver. On the left side, Benoit is in there. He goes in motion right to left. Moranek back to pass, throws over the head of the intended receiver, Joe Emma, a junior from Queens, New York, who's played in only four games coming into today's game, Westmoreland covering. But it was pressure up front. Well, it was Jeff Hannes that, that got in and, and put the pressure on. I'm a little impressed right now with the defensive pass rush. They've been in there. You see Gene Carpenter's overall career record. The defensive rush has been a good one. They forced him to get rid of the ball a little soon. That time the pass was just off the mark simply because he had to rush it a little bit. It is second and 15 at the 31. 
Bishop far out to the left side. Back split. Moranic back to pass. Throws over the middle. Dumps it off to Walker. Walker reverses his field. Still struggling and down close to the 20-yard line. He'll be short of a first down by about four yards. Costelli came up to make the stop. Take a look at it once again from, from the safety's point of view. They had three wide receivers out on this pattern. They sneak Walker out of the backfield. This kid's a premier, premier player. He, he can run inside. He runs outside. You, get to, you see right there his ability. He's got quick feet. And when you get in the open ground like that, start taking those short, uh, choppy steps, that's what creates the, uh, the uh, over-pursuit, allowing him to cut back, gain the extra yardage. And there's a timeout been called by East Stroudsburg as Moranic wants to come over and check things out with his coach. Third down and four when we come back. 7 to nothing, East Stroudsburg. Louisville, this Division II ball game, a battle for that top spot in the Eastern Division of the PSAC. It's third down and four. The ball at the 20-yard line. High formation. Slotted to the right is Benoit. Quick drop, throws over the middle. Emma has it, spins, has the first down inside the five. Flag is down after the tackle to the three-yard line. Joe Emma, Jeff Raber made the stop. Joe Emma is a junior from Queens, New York. And Charlie, Emma's been a kid that's been injured on and off the last two years, had a shoulder problem, sat out, suffered a concussion earlier this year, but he he's plays with great intensity, has a big heart, and uh, as you can see, he'll, he'll catch it in traffic, and he's got some quick feet. Face mask. Another great play. After the catch, it's first down. They had a face mask penalty tacked on. He couldn't go much closer to the goal line, but half the distance after the 17-yard uh, gain by Emma on the pass from Baranek. So it'll be first and goal at the two. The up man is Dan Duck, the fullback. Walker is behind him. In motion, Kelleher. They go to the Kelleher side. Walker carries a man into the end zone. He just carried Rod Pension, the junior linebacker, into the end zone. Second touchdown of the day for Dell Walker. It is good. We have a 14 to nothing ball game, 6-17 remaining first quarter. Charlie, if Millersville's had one problem defending the rush this year, it's been at the end position. Almost every running play East Stroudsburg has run has been aimed at that end position. And you see right here, while it's, it's pretty well defensed, Walker's just too big and strong at 6'1", 215. He'll run it right through. He certainly ran it right through Rod Pension, who's 6'2", 190, and a junior. 14 to nothing is our score in this particular ball game. As I mentioned, this is the 35th meeting between these two schools as Pingator scores, uh, tees the ball up. At home, Denny Dowd has only lost two PSAC games. Overall, in his 10 years here, he has only lost uh, something like nine games. And don't forget tomorrow, National Football League action here on CBS. The Lions against the Redskins. The Lions have won their last two. The Redskins, the NFL's highest scoring team. It all begins with the NFL today, 12.30 Eastern, tomorrow on CBS. Pingators, kickoff is high. Stonewall at the three. Ten. is being stifled here this afternoon. And Charlie, I'll tell you what, although he hasn't made the tackle yet, the first guy down on that special teams unit every single time has been number 10, Tracy Coleman, uh, left cornerback. He's probably one of the most improved players on the ball club this year for East Stroudsburg. Just shy of the 15 at their own 14-yard line. Millersville gets the ball for the third time this afternoon. Their first possession ended in a punt. Their second one with a dot interception. Kaplan pitches back to Stonewall. He turns the corner, has some running room. Far sideline, has the first down, still on his feet. 20, 30, 35-yard line. And Moblitz, the linebacker, finally made the stop. 
but a good run. 21 yards by this Stonewall. Is, this is a very well executed play. You'll get to see all the line action. There's the key right there. I believe that was uh, Thompson to let him get outside. And now when this kid gets in the open territory, look out. He's capable of taking it all the way on you. You saw Bill Scott with his head down trying to make the stop and the tackle, and he just ran right past him. Well, this certainly, you know, this has been an offensive unit that over the, the course of the season has had a lot of long drives and come up short in the scoring end. A long drive here resulting in a score would obviously be a confidence builder. And this is the fullback running and still on his feet, and that is Coyne, Bobby Coyne, who picks up about seven or eight yards on that run. And Coleman made the stop. But Bobby Coyne getting some action here. He's a senior from Newtown Square. Co-captain, eight-yard game. It'll be second down and two. The ball at the 43-yard line. Millersville has not been in East Stroudsburg territory this afternoon. Lumpkin to the bottom of your screen. Split wide left. Westmoreland is in motion, coming toward you. And Whoa. quarterback Kaplan is dropped in his tracks by Stottleberg, the left tackle, the junior, from Vernon Township, New Jersey. And Kaplan, out of Glenside, played at the same high school as Reggie Jackson. Well, he just flat out beats the block of uh, Ed Elliott here. <laughs> no secret there. Just a one-on-one -on -one missed assignment. That was Stottleberg who made the stop. It'll be third down. Four yards to go. Kaplan goes to the air. Uh oh, it's one tackle. It's Still wide open feet. out there. And he has the first down and finally runs out of bounds on the far sideline. I think he may be shaken up too. Coleman was the man who made the hit on him. He was a little slow getting up. That is Kaplan, but he's going to be all right. A gain of eight and a first down on that run by the quarterback, Kaplan. Well, you have to have the, the ability to improvise if you're going to be a quarterback in the game of football today. Obviously, receivers covered. Sees the defense coming once again. Anytime you lose outside containment, you're in big trouble. Now it's just a race to the sidelines. Coleman's going to come in here and deliver a shot, though. From Sheltonham High, you see Westmoreland coming toward you in motion. And the pitch. Oh, they stood Stonewall up, didn't they? Right at the midfield stripe. It was Cal Thompson from Braille, New Jersey, a senior. Well, this has got to be the toughest block in football. Wide receiver on an outside linebacker, a complete mismatch. Westmoreland did a pretty decent job. Thompson, however, eventually shed the block. In that situation, really, the responsibility is on the running back to set that block up. That time he chose inside. Uh, great play by Thompson. All-conference player for two years. They are loaded at the linebacking position. Second down, seven yards to go. Kaplan wants to go to the air again. Throws! Intercepted! And that is Reichenbach. And he runs it back, and there's a flag down. Second interception by the East Stroudsburg defense. As you look at Mr. Reichenbach, the senior from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, right down the road. Charlie, this is just a tremendous defensive secondary. They had 17 interceptions Personal foul. coming into this uh, into this ball game. Two already on this <laughs> in this first quarter. And it's only two passes that you know, in two passes, they've had two interceptions. Well, this is the old tip drill. And you know something? I mean, this is only justice. If you put your hand up and tip it, you should be able to get to be the guy that intercepts it, too. No question. And uh, Stonewall has to come up and bring him down. But we have a personal foul tacked on to the interception. So that gives East Stroudsburg good field possession. The ball will be moved inside the 40 to about the 37-yard line of Millersville. They started their last drive at the Millersville 48 and scored. And here's a pitch uh -oh. back from Walker. Baranek throws. Look out. And he has a man. Touchdown. This will be Bishop. Tim Bishop. His sixth touchdown reception of the year. And we have a 20 to nothing ball game. Bingo 
Minotaur in for his third PAT of the afternoon. Benoit the holder. That is up, and it is good. So it's 21 to nothing with 3.11 left in the first quarter. Well, Charlie, I think what they do here is they take advantage of the right cornerback, Jeff Raber. He's a very aggressive defensive back. He likes to come up and make the tackle. And as you, here you see the end of it. They fold him, beat him deep right down the middle. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> What can you say? They've had more big plays this year on the East Stroudsburg side than they've had since they can remember. They've had a 90-yard touchdown pass. We've seen a 72-yarder here today. I think they've had seven or eight plays over 60 yards on the year. I don't know the exact figures, but it's just, it's, it's really been one of those dream years offensively from that standpoint. Baranek, seven of nine, 170 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and coming into the game, or coming into the year, his rating efficiency last year, he was number 15 in passing efficiency in the nation with a 121.6 rating. We're going to tell you how to get those rating points in a little while. I got a little quiz for you. Stonewall picks it up at the 8-yard line. And Stonewall out to the 22-23 yard line. And it's Tracy Coleman, first guy down on that special unit again. Just look at it once again. All the way from the end zone. Now, if you're a cornerback, you see that, that big t uh, tailback coming up the middle. Uh, your first reaction is to come up and run support. Once again, an off-balance throw that is put right on the money. It uh, certainly is. And remember this, uh, Diskin, the backup quarterback, has thrown eight touchdowns himself on the season. That was just Baranek's sixth touchdown pass. 41-9 was the score last year. East Stroudsburg beat Millersville as we see Stonewall going around the right side, and he can't turn the corner. The defense is playing very strong. Cal Thompson, the senior linebacker, along with Mike Reichenbach. Obviously now, Charlie, what, what does Millersville do? Uh, coming into the ball game, anytime you face a quick striking offense, you know, you want to control the ball, drive it down the field. Uh, you got to believe this early in the ball game, they'll continue with that philosophy. Uh, it's much too early to, to abandon your game plan. Dr. Gene Carpenter, eighth best winning percentage in Division II football. Has his troubles today so far. Face mask was the penalty against East Stroudsburg. And it'll be a first down for Millersville. And remember this, Charlie. I mean, this is a... A Millersville team that has a history of being a high-scoring offense. They got 24 points a game last year, 30 plus the year before. Uh, you know they can put 35 points on the ball game on the board in this game. This time the fullback Coyne carries straight ahead for a couple of yards, and it was Stottleberg who came up to make the stop. It'll be second down. We'll give him two on that last play. Second and eight. We're in the first quarter. 2.35 is the time remaining. And as you look at the graphic there, it tells you 25 of 36. Kaplan throws long, overthrows his intended receiver, Lumpkin, the sophomore from York, Pennsylvania. He had pulled up short. Bobby Dodd was defending. Well, this could have been either a... a, a a missed time pass Lumpkin that time stopped expecting a short route. It could have been a stop and go with just bad timing, uh, just not a good pass play. You know, you take a look at the East Stroudsburg defense coming into the season. They had two new cornerbacks. They thought that would be their weak spot. So you say, well, maybe that's a position we'll attack. And you look at the interception record, and uh, there just aren't many cracks in this ball club. It certainly isn't. As they get up first down with Stonewall carrying. And it was Reichenbach on the stop, but the ball is down to about the 48-yard line. Well, that time they ran over the right guard, right tackle tandem of El Haj and Hartline. And this is the type of offense that when they get going, it's a first and second down type offense. When, they're get, when they get rolling, they very seldom experience a third down. Lumpkin to the bottom of your screen in the slot is Westmoreland, and they hand off to Smith, Troy Smith, a fullback from Spring Grove, Pennsylvania, a sophomore, and he picks his way for about six yards before Chuck Reese makes the stop. 
Here's the time remaining in the first quarter. 140. Boy, the guy's got some cheap seats up there, huh? Mm. Remember the old baseball days when the kids used to put the scores up? He, it I looked used, like they, he was working from those days. Right? Yeah, I used to do that. You get paid 25 cents a game. <laughs> Kaplan throws, he has it in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. That was Eric Andreev, a sophomore from Ephrata, Pennsylvania. And Bobby Dodd again defending. Third down four. Millersville trails 21 to nothing. We're in the first quarter. A minute and 21 seconds is the time remaining. Charlie Neal and Steve Grody with you here, live in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, as we look at this one once again. Andreev, he had his hand on it, but just didn't come down with it. Let's see what they do on third and four. Kaplan down the line, gives to Stonewall. Stonewall is going to be short of a first down as he struggles down to about the 44-yard line. And I believe it was Stottleberg who came up to make the stop. He had help from Boblitz. You saw Stonewall slip as he tried to make his cut. Stonewall looks to me to be the type of back, the way he runs, that would just do so much better on AstroTurf. Uh, the backs with the quick feet, the guys who like to cut back, uh, they lose a little effectiveness on the natural grass. Andy Brubaker is in to punt. He's averaging 36.2 yards per punt, his long a 52-yarder this year. Gerhardt is the deep man. And it will bounce, and Millersville may get a break as the ball is down inside the five at about the four-yard line by Heffelfinger. Mark Heffelfinger, a tailback, came down and down the ball. Don't forget, next Saturday, NBA returns to CBS. Ralph Sampson makes his debut in the NBA. San Antonio against Houston. George Gervin and his gang taking on Ralph and his crew. And so we're finally going to have San Antonio, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so be sure to join Dick Stockton and the newest member of our CBS Sports family, Tommy Heinsohn, next Saturday, 345 Eastern. Time for all the action on CBS Sports. First down. The pitch to the second man through. And running with the ball is Dan Duck. That was the fullback. And he gives him some breathing room. Or was that Mike Sebeski? That might have been Sebeski. That was 23, the junior from Pittston, Pennsylvania. And he takes it up close to the 10-yard line. And it'll be second down and five. Second and five with eight seconds remaining in the first quarter. They may not get this playoff before the quarter comes to an end. And I don't believe they will. So from East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, that's going to be the end of the first quarter here. And the home team enjoying a three-touchdown advantage, 21 to nothing. Pennsylvania, beautiful fall afternoon. The trees are starting to change the leaves. Some people are starting to get ready for Halloween already here. <laughs> but that was my partner down there. <laughs> you got another week, Steve, before uh, Halloween. <laughs> okay, so back to the ball game. Duck and Sebeski in the backfield. Double twin set. Third down. And the pass out in the flat. It's complete to Benoit. Benoit runs out of bounds at about the 15-yard line before Westmoreland, or made the reception. It was Westmoreland who ran him out. That's Robert Brian Westmoreland. He has a cousin that's on offense, the receiver. I think you're going to get it, the idea as this game progresses that this is the type of team, East Stroudsburg, both offensively and defensively, special teams included, that just keeps coming at you, coming at you, and coming at you. They lost their first ball game of the year. Uh, they've been 5-0 and since. And Millersville lost their first two. Straight eye formation. It's Benoit in motion. First down at the 15. Back to pass. Baranek. Maybe he'll run it. He does. And he's drug out of bounds by Jim Cassidy, the sophomore strong side linebacker. Number 62. You see him there. Baranek. Well, that normally when you sprint out like that and you try to run a flood pattern, you generally put three receivers into the zone. That time they had just two receivers. The linebacker picked up the tight end. The wide receiver was covered. Uh, after that, pretty much no option. We're going to explain how they come up, the NCAA. 
NCAA with a quarterback's rating and passing efficiency after this play. You are. <laughs> I'm going to listen and learn. <laughs> That's Robner in motion. Back over the middle, complete to Emma. Great pass, great reception at the 31-yard line. Side armed it, and Norman Brown brought him down. Let's look at it once again. Well, you know, they had a tailback, or they had Benoit going out and up. I thought that Baranek wanted to hit him. This kid can throw the ball when he's off balance. 13-yard gain, and I'll tell you, he, he, he does not even hardly look at the receiver. Uh, he just knows where he's at. Boy, I tell you what, I thought Raber was really going to lay one on Benoit. Got there just a little late. You know, I thought if he would have, instead of going for the big hit, I thought he might have been there for the interception, too. This time on the counter play. And Sobeski, Sobeski down to the 41 yard line. And should be another first down as Moses Austin made the stop. Sobeski, a now, junior from Pittston, Pennsylvania. Watch the block of the pulling guard right there. He just buries uh, Clemens. You know, it's pretty easy to run the ball when you're getting that kind of blocking. You see the downfield help. The linemen are just doing an excellent job. That was Bob Corson that, that threw the block on John Clemens. It'll be first down and 10. bit premature movement there. We would have been Israel, I don't think Israel had any idea what he really wanted to do He's on that play. He's a freshman from Hellatown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> He's in there. Dead ball, illegal motion. Passing efficiency. This is how the NCAA comes up with the ratings for quarterbacks to determine those points. They multiply the yards per attempt times 8.4. Then they add, which makes sense. Legal procedure. Then they add the completion percentage. Then they add the touchdown percentage times 3.3. Then they subtract the interception percentage by times two. You have the rating points. We, we knew that, Charlie. For example, <laughs> we'll tell you the example later. <laughs> now, if we can get that on a graphic somehow. <laughs> That's Benoit in motion, going to the top of your screen. Baranek, flag is down, throws for Benoit, it's overthrown. And it was Costelli who was covering defensively in Austin. Let's see what the flag is all about. But coming into the game, Baranek was six, uh, was 164. This was last year's stats. He was 164 for 302, 2,067 yards, 17 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, which was 54%, which gave him a rating of 121.6. This year, his rating is down to 96.5. He's still having a great year. <laughs> he's still having a great year. There he is right there. But one of the reasons he's having a great year is that they have had 11 touchdowns running. They've had 14 passing touchdowns. He's only thrown four coming into today's game. But uh, they've thrown 11 touchdown passes, but they've scored 14 on the run. So that gives you kind of a balanced offense. And that's what we talked about earlier in the show. I mean, you come into a, any game or any season doing what you do best. There you see the head man who has put this whole thing together and done it so well. You do what you do best, and then you also take advantage of the defense, and this coaching staff uh, seems to have that down to a science. We mentioned that his counterpart, Coach Carpenter, eighth winning coach in Division II, great catch by Benoit at the 40. Dowds, fourth winning his coach. Moses Austin on the stop. And you know about Division II football, as a rule, most conferences, they're allowed to have scholarships up to 45. This particular conference, there are no scholarships. I know there are none in East Stroudsburg. No. And that's a very interesting uh, situation. That gives, that means a kid comes here, he comes here because he wants to, and he wants to learn, and he, you know, the education and they play is And they play very good high school football out in this area. They so you know do. when you get these kids, they are very well schooled in the game of football. Second down 12, Baranek throws incomplete, intended for Randy Israel, the freshman. Incomplete, he's a backup tight end. Ron Pichon on the defense there. 
So it'll bring up a third down, 12 situation. The ball just shy of the 40-yard line. Third down conversions. East Stroudsburg is two for three. This is a drive that started at their own four-yard line seemingly ages ago. <laughs> really? <laughs> Swings it out to the right side. Sebeski. Sebeski is down at the 45-yard line. He will be shy of a first down by about seven. Hall, Corson blocking on that right side, and it was Cassidy on the stop. You know, kind of an interesting play. It didn't look to be a screen. Obviously, a little delay pattern out of the backfield, but they they did, in fact, get the, the two linemen downfield, uh, pretty much just playing the down markers that time, pick up a little yardage, get a little bit better field position to get this punt away. Pingator averaging 39 uh oh yards. here we He's go. He's going to run it. He's going to make it, too. And he has a first down. He has done that so often this year. Pingator, he scored two touchdowns on fake kicking situations like that. We mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Once again, this squad just keeps coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. And they have everything. Angle. Huh? Hey, they, hey, they've got it all. Well, what he did, he looked and he saw that the rushing, the defense was not rushing. They had turned to go downfield to set up the return. Well, it looked like he had the option. He, he went into his uh, uh, kicking motion, saw that, yes, in fact, he would be able to make the first down, turned it on. Boy, oh boy, relentless. He has the longest running play from scrimmage for East Stroudsburg this year, 29 yards. <laughs> He's the punter, right? The kicker. That was an eight-yard gain. It's first down. Baratic goes to the air. Throws is batted in the air. Flag oh. is down. It's intercepted. No. Let's see what the no it dropped. Let's see what the flag is all about. It was Hannes who tipped it. Now who came up with it? I believe. It was maybe Haran who came up with the ball and almost came up with the interception, which would have given Millersville the ball because I believe this penalty flag is against East Stroudsburg. So it's a tough break for Millersville. And certainly they need a big defensive play, some type of a turnover to get themselves uh, uh, back into this ball game. Let's Watch 53 get his hand on it. Let's see exactly who it is here. There that's, it is. Yeah, that's Hannes, the freshman. And watch 99. He just can't hold on. No, that was 67. That's, I thought it was 99. That, that was, was Warman. Warman. Warman, okay. Holding offense. Go first down. One to go. So it is a first down. There has been 55 yards and penalties already against East Stroudsburg. Baranek is over 200 yards in passing. There's that fake out to the left side, but he cannot get away from Chris Hangen. Well, Hangen, it just perpetuates the great tradition of nose guards they, they've had at Millersville. Steve Sudak, Mike Marks, Kodak All-Americans. This kid's just a sophomore. They project him down the road as another Kodak All-American at that nose guard position. That is second down and 29 yards to go. Again, it seems like East Stroudsburg has held this ball in eternity. They started at their own four-yard line in the third in the first quarter. Here we are with 11 minutes left in the second quarter, and they're only they at the 34-yard line. They haven't made it very far, but <laughs> 30 they, yards. <laughs> they've kept the ball, though, haven't they? Yes, they have. Moranic under pressure, throws incomplete. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver, and that was Rodman, a sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It was Pishon on the defense, covering on that play. It'll be third down 29. The ball at the 34-yard line. And they're coming in with Emma with a play from the sideline. Last year, 41 to 9 was the score. The previous year, 31 nothing the other way. Right here, yeah, at this right field, here. Millersville shut them out. And they talked about that yesterday uh, in their little pregame talk that we that we listened in on. Delay of game, too much time. They took too much time to get this playoff. Add another five, so make it third down and 34. That ball foul. What's the difference? With What's that the difference third now? Long? Must have been a. I tell you what, it must have been a complicated play they brought in. <laughs> So again, 
another penalty. That is the seventh penalty today against East Stroudsburg. Coming into the game, they'd only averaged 6.1 penalties and 54 yards. They've already been penalized seven times for 60 yards, which is just the second quarter. So they, they're going to pass their average. They've already passed it, in fact. Emma comes in motion to the bottom of your screen. He's out of the screen right now. Paranic, third down, 29, Wide 34, open. rather. Ooh. And it was Rodman on the reception, and he's wrapped up right away by Moses Austin, and it'll bring up a fourth down. You know, Austin's an interesting story. He was out of school last year, went back to Camden, worked in a factory, found out that it would... Uh, Probably be a little bit better future if he got his education, and now he's uh, very concerned about getting that degree. As you can see, he'll put his helmet right in, the, right in your gut. He's a pro prospect, very good player. Pingator won't run it this time. He'll kick it away. Gets off a poor kick. It goes out of bounds on the near side at the 22-yard line. That's where Millersville will take over first down and 10. They trail by three touchdowns. We'll be back in just a moment. Division two ball game. Millersville and East Stroudsburg, the home team leading 21 to nothing. Kaplan on first down, rolling left, wants to throw, stops, sets up, and decides he wants to run. Falls down at the 30-yard line. A gain of about six on the play. Reichenbach was the man to make sure he stayed down. And it'll be second down at about, we'll make it three. Pick it pick up of seven on that last play by Kaplan. If you heard the crowd go, ooh, it's because Bob Boyne really laid a block on Reichen, uh, Bach after the, uh, after the quarterback had hit the ground. Second down. Straight ahead is Coyne. Make that, not Coyne, but Troy Smith is in at fullback. He's 5'11", 190-pounder. Calamia on the stop out of Norristown, Pennsylvania. Most of these young men are from around the Pennsylvania, New Jersey area, one with the exception of a couple kids from New York City in the Long Island area. A lot of good football players, a lot of football, because as the coach explained to us yesterday, it's easier to recruit for Division II school in this part of the country, let's say, than they would out in Idaho or somewhere because 30% of your population is, is concentrated right here in this part of the nation. Stonewall on that last carry. After the first down on the previous play, a gain of one, it'll be second down and nine. Stottleberg, the left tackle, number 74, who's playing his first game. He missed the last three because of an injury. He's back at that left tackle spot. Kaplan, Stonewall has it, turns the corner, dances inside, is down at the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and about four. Boblitz on the stop. Well, Smith carried the time before. At that time, he, he really threw a great block on Thompson, responsible for the game. You can see they haven't gone away from their game plan yet. They're trying to drive the ball down the field, keep that other offense uh, on the sidelines. There's Kaplan's stats in the passing department. He's 0 for 4. He was 52% coming into the game. Again, he runs first down across the 45 to about the 46-yard line. Kaplan, on the option, decided to keep it and run it. Reese on the stop. Of course, you know, they run the option. Kaplan is the second leading carrier on the uh, on the team. Stonewall had carried the ball 90 times coming in. Kaplan 81. Not much of an average, but still, he is a threat. He certainly is. He scored three touchdowns by way of the run. Seven forty remaining in the first half. Kaplan hands off straight ahead to the fullback. That was Smith. And he picks up a couple of yards as we look at this 10th ranked Michigan there you go. leading Iowa. And yeah. if Michigan wins this one, sets up a big matchup next week against the so Fighting Illini. Probably the two best defensive teams, as you look at another score, two best defensive teams in the Big Ten. And of course, Iowa beat Michigan 9-7 to in Ann Arbor two years ago. Second and six. You saw that Mansfield score. That Mansfield team is in the PSAC. Towson is an independent Division II. Kaplan throws, knocked in the air, incomplete. A couple of people had their hands on it. It was intended for Lumpkin, 
but nobody could come up with it defensively. Coleman, Scott, all of those guys back there having a chance for the interception. I think what you want to watch now as you, as you watch Millersville run this sprint out pattern, for the most part, they're running the same pattern with just two receivers. And when you're playing against a zone defense, the backs will play man to man in their zone, and they really just don't have enough options. Uh, they've defended that, that, uh, that same pattern every time pretty successfully. It is third down and six. As Kaplan, he decides to go straight ahead. He was, he's going to be close. Depends on where they mark the ball. Close to a first down. It looked like if he'd have kept running straight, he would have automatically had it, and he decided to be a little fancy there on Cal Thompson, and Thompson stopped him, and they're going to have to measure to see if he picked up the first down. Let's watch him again. Well, this is a, a play by design. It's a quarterback draw. You can see the center fire out on the linebacker, take him out of the picture. Uh, the hole opened up very nicely, and you're right. I think if he'd have run straight ahead, he'd have had it for sure. They're measuring right now, and Fourth down. he did not get it. Fourth and inches now. Do they go for it? They trail 21 to nothing. I think he got to go. I mean, if you can't. They're in their territory. You if, figure with the fullback that they have and, and, and Troy Smith or Coyne, depending on who you put in there, and just go straight ahead. Well, if you can't make, make fourth and two inches, you probably don't deserve to win anyway. And here's a team that runs the ball fairly consistently. And in all honesty, it's really been the big play that has hurt the Millersville defense. They are going to go for it. I think they're going to call a timeout. Kaplan's going to go over and talk to Coach Gene Carpenter. And we'll be back here in East Stroudsburg. The score is 21 to nothing. East Stroudsburg has that three touchdown advantage. Berg, it's a fourth down situation in inches. Millersville has the ball. They trail 21 to nothing. And as a flag down, the quarterback kept it and went straight ahead. Let's see if there's an illegal procedure in the area in which the flag was thrown. You would think it might be against Millersville, but let's wait and see. I believe it's going to be against East Stroudsburg. And that's the official signal for my referee. And it's going to be against East Stroudsburg, and that'll give them the first down. And don't forget, near the conclusion of today's CBS Sports NCAA football broadcast, Defense. Steve and I will be selecting a Chevrolet MVP from each of the teams. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. The MVPs receive certificates from Chevrolet acknowledging their outstanding performances. There's the penalty situation. Eight for 65 yards. Smith and Stonewall in the backfield. Kaplan rolls right. He puts it in the air, incomplete, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Mark Lumpkin, a sophomore from York, Pennsylvania, Coleman, covering defensively. And I think that ball went right through Lumpkin's hands and hit him in the face mask. You have to catch those. They're right there. We're in the second quarter with 6.14 remaining. Kaplan is 0 for 6 in the passing department. Well, and coming into this ball game, you look at the offensive keys. They want to get the ball to Stonewall 25 times. They said they have to get the ball to Lumpkin and Westmoreland, the, uh, the receivers. They have not completed a pass yet in the ball game. Well, a lot of movement up front there. El Hodge, the left guard, moved. Stottleberg, the left tackle, moved on defense. El Hodge on offense. And let's see, who's it against? Illegal motion, it's going to be charged against Millersville. And let's watch number 76, the left guard. There he is, coming up a little bit prematurely. That ball, legal procedure, offense. Okay. El Hodge is graded out as the best, the second best offensive lineman that they have. Lyler, the left tackle, graded out as the best offensive lineman. He's the number 70. Second down, 15. Kaplan, screen. He has it complete. That's Coyne. And Coyne Ooh, gets the first down. is close to a first down at the 30-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. On a second and 15, they go with the screen. And Bobby Dodd made the stop. But uh, we have a first down, I believe, for Millersville. Well, Coyne's a good pass receiver. He runs a 4-5-40. 
And you know this was well set up because any time third down, they say he didn't make it. At the 30 yard line, it's going to be third down and short. Third and inches. Westmoreland in motion coming toward you. Straight ahead, the fullback coin has it. First down, still on his feet. Ten and down to the eight yard line. Goes Bobby Coyne, the senior from Newtown Square, Boblitz, the linebacker, had to make the stop. Now, this play is effective because, remember now, if the dive man doesn't get the ball, you've got the option to worry about. You can see the defensive end goes right for the quarterback. Once he breaks that first tackle, there's basically nobody out there. If I'll tell you, if the wide receiver, blocks uh, Lump, Lumpkin, if he gets in position to block where he's supposed to be, this is a touchdown. No question about it. A 23-yard gain by Bobby Coyne. So it'll be a first and goal at the eight-yard line. Westmoreland goes away from you in motion. Straight ahead. They give to the big guy, Smith. Troy Smith, the sophomore. He spins his way to about the two-yard line. Now you can see how quickly this play develops. This is a play that, that they have not used up to this season. They've used the off-tackle uh, option series, but this quick dive option is a new play in, in their repertoire. You can, you can see how quick hitting it is. If you make one mistake, that backs uh, through through into the secondary. They're at the one, second and goal. Coin and Stonewall are the backs. Westmoreland in motion. Uh -huh. We have movement again. And this was number 70 this time. Blyler, the left tackle. Carlton Blyler watching. Boy, oh boy, you can't uh, afford a mistake. This close to the goal line. Yeah. And Not when you're trailing 21-0. You never want a mistake when you're this close to the goal line, especially when you're down 21-0. That ball, a little procedure on the offense. So that'll second move it back goal. outside the five to about the six-yard line. It'll be second down and goal at the six. I think the other thing we must commend is the, the ball handling of Kaplan. This is a tough handoff he's been making to these quick dive people off the, off the tackle. Troy Smith, Rick Stonewall behind him. Kaplan pitches to Stonewall. Nowhere to run. He loses yards back to the nine-yard line. Cal Thompson, the linebacker, was the first man to hit him. Billy Camp came in and helped finish him off along with Stottleberg. So it'll bring up a third and goal. Now the ball is at the nine-yard line. They started with a, a, a first and goal at the one, or second and goal at the one. Well, this is that was the kind of play that a sports writer will definitely question because in a goal line situation where the defense is going to attack, you, you might want to run a quicker hitting play. It is third and goal at the nine. Back to pass as Kaplan has time, throws in the end zone. He caught it. Touchdown. Woo! Westmoreland. James Westmoreland, his first touchdown reception of the year. Bobby Dodd was the man who hit him. What a great reception by Westmoreland. He just held on to that one, didn't Boy, he? Boy, I'm telling you, and he knew he was going to get hit. The pass was right on the money. He got his, he had enough time to get his hands on the ball, tuck it in. That was the first completion by Kaplan. Except for the, the screen the screen pass. pass. The first, first pass downfield. Downfield. The screen pass was the other one. And I think the coach wants a timeout. He may consider going for the two-point conversion. I don't know what's going on unless there was some confusion on who was coming into the ball game or what they were going to do. But 21-6 to six is the score. And I believe they're going to go ahead and kick it. Brubaker has come on the field. He is 13 for 14 in PATs. As and you look at the Gene Carpenter. And Charlie, over the last five, six minutes, it's really been nothing but excellent execution and blocking by that offensive front line for Millersville, which has been the difference. That quick dive, they've started to feature that quick dive play, which East Stroudsburg has not seen on film, and it's been very successful. Kaplan's done a great job at executing. They haven't fumbled, and they're back in the ballgame. Hagen will hold. Rue Baker. The kick is up, and it is no good off to the left. So the second extra point of the year is missed by Brubaker. 
Let's take a look at this uh, from the end zone. He had two receivers coming right down the middle. There you see both of them. That's just a great, great reception. Take a look at it from another angle. Same result, 21-7. 21-6. They missed Six, the extra missed. point. Still <laughs> finally getting on the scoreboard. A 77-yard, 14-play drive. They used seven minutes off the clock. And it was capped with a nine-yard pass. Kaplan to Westmoreland. This ball is coming down to Gerhardt. Far sideline. Comes up the field. Has some room. Still on his feet. And across the 30 to the 34-yard line. Gerhardt, who was averaging 3.2 yards per return. That one a 20, as long as a 20-yarder. A good one that time. Six is our score. He's Stroudsburg leading Millersville. And when you look at Millersville coming into today's game, talking about being behind, they lost their first game to Shepard, 37-14. They trail 23-7. Uh, in their loss to Slippery Rock, they lost that one in the last minute against Mansfield, who they beat last week 21 to 10. They trailed 10 to nothing in that game. So, and then they led Bloomsburg 14 uh, a week before last. And last week they lost to Bloomsburg 22-14. They trailed 14 to three. So they can come from behind. Well, and in that Bloomsburg game last week, they had 11 and 14 play drives in the first half alone and came up empty. So I think that type of drive might be the confidence builder that this offense needs to come back in this game. East Stroudsburg with the ball at their own 33 after the 33-yard return by Gerhardt. And the pitch goes to Walker. He has two touchdowns already today, and Walker picks up just a couple of grudging yards across the 35 to the 36. Pinchuk on the stop. There you look at Dell Walker, big kid. They list him as 6'1". He looks more like he's 6'2", 6'3". He's 215, a senior. He transferred from Ellsworth Junior College in Iowa. Did not play against Millersville the previous two years because of injuries. He played during the year, but didn't play in this particular game. There he is again. Walker, flag is down. Bounces to the outside, but a good tackle defensively by Ron Pinson. Let's see what the penalty marker is all about. Illegal use of hands or holding offensively against East Stroudsburg. That was a second down play. Charlie, it would appear, unless we something changes on this third down Illegal situation. Illegal use of the hands on the offense. It's refused. Third down. It is refused, so that make it a third down. It would appear that maybe East Stroudsburg's content to maybe let some of this time run off here and uh, settle for a 21-6 lead at halftime, but they're capable of anything. No question about that. Third down and seven. Dan Duck, the up man in the eye. Walker is the second back. Duranic under pressure. Gets it off. Has it complete to uh -oh. the tight end. Uh -oh. Kelleher. Kelleher. 30, 25. Run down at the 20. Make that the 17-yard line by Moses Austin. They'll stop it at the 19. Let's look at it again. Watch Kelleher. As the play develops, you say, uh-oh, he's going to get sacked. Maybe Millersville's going to get the ball and get a chance to, to uh, put some points on the board. But you see right here, Warman comes in and misses the, uh, misses the tackle once again. When you have this much time to throw the ball, these crossing patterns allow themselves to extend a little bit further, and he just out, outruns the coverage in the opposite direction. Moses Austin makes the saving tackle. Duck straight up the middle. Five! And still on his feet. Drive down just at about the six-yard line. Dan Duck, the sophomore from Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. Miss Sean on the stop. I said Duck was a freshman earlier in, in the game. He is a sophomore. He's had a slight hamstring pull. It obviously isn't bothering him. He's a tackle breaker. He's graded 100% on the special units every single week this year. He's in the starting lineup now. He was the leading tackler on the special teams last year. 
Incomplete. Oh. Almost picked off in the secondary by Westmoreland. That is Brian Westmoreland, the cousin of James, who caught the touchdown for Millersville. Well, Westmoreland did a great job of, of uh, chucking the wide receiver and not allowing him to get inside. I thought that there might have been contact while the ball was in the air. It was certainly a, a close call and possibly could a flag could have been thrown. A minute and 13 seconds is the time remaining here. In the first half, we have a 21-6 ball game. Emma splits out far to the right side. Del Walker and Dan Duck. As you look at Benoit in motion. They go right. Baranek looking. Throws. Touchdown, Benoit. He beat Pete Costelli. Benoit, his fifth touchdown reception of the year. Third touchdown pass of the afternoon by Baranek. Ken Pingator will come in to attempt the point after. The kick is up. And it is good. We have a 28-6 ball game with 106 remaining. Charlie, I think you're going to see in this replay that it's pretty tough to fault the coverage of Costelli. He's right on the receiver. It's just a pinpoint pass. Look at that. A matter of inches, he gets his hand on the ball, and it's a deflection. 67-yard drive. And it's a 28-6 ball game. East Stroudsburg with three touchdown passes from Baranek. They lead. Points on the board. They get stung with the long play to the tight end, Kelleher. Really, I, you know, if Warman comes in, makes the quarterback sack, they punt the ball. Millersville has a chance to, to come back and, and maybe get a field goal. Uh, boy, it turned around in a hurry. It certainly did. And instead of, let's, as you said, being uh, down maybe only, what, well, at that time, the score 21 was 21-6, and maybe it was 21-9. Maybe even they score a touchdown and make it 21-13. Instead of being down, what, eight points, they're down now, what, 22 points. So it's a, it's a big swing there. A minute and six seconds remaining here in the first half. Joey Pingator will try it once again. Last kickoff went out of bounds. Again, the same two deep men, Stonewall and Coyne. This one goes downfield. It'll be coin if he can ever pick it up at the nine-yard line. Finally turns it upfield, breaks a couple tackle, tackles and gets it outside the 20 to about the 22. Tracy Coleman, Coleman. the special teams guy, comes <laughs> down and does the job once again. First down and 10. The ball will be spotted at the 22-yard line for Millersville. You see the time remaining, 57 seconds in the first half. They'll try to get something going before the half ends. Westmoreland in motion. Kaplan hands off and straight ahead was Coyne. Coin is out close to the 30-yard line. They'll spot it right at about the 30 before Reichenbach made the stop. It'll be second down. We'll call it two. Right at the 30. This is the sixth offensive possession for Millersville. Two have ended by way of an interception. Kaplan pitches back. Stonewall. He has the first down, still on his feet, and out of bounds on the far sideline at about the 40-yard line. There's a penalty marker down. Bobby Dodd knocked him out of bounds. Charlie, they've run the ball twice. If, in fact, there is a penalty flag. I thought I saw a penalty flag down. Uh, Unless they I were just marking just, it out of bounds there. Uh, now I think maybe they'll put it up in the air. I don't think they wanted a chance of turnover and possibly having some more points put on the board, but they're at their own 40 now, 20, 20 seconds to play. Yeah. You have uh, to do something. Huh? Might as well just throw it up in the air and see, uh, see what happens. Well, you've got Westmoreland, you've got Andreev. Westmoreland, a pretty good receiver with 18 receptions coming into the game. If you take a look at the defense, they've only got one guy real deep. They reverse it, and they reverse it to the uh -oh. Lumpkin. Lumpkin has a block. 
Across midfield. Go out of bounds. Runs out of bounds inside the 40-yard line at about the 38 with 11 seconds remaining in the half. This is a very well set up play. This is the straight option. It looks like it's getting pitched back to the uh, to the uh, tailback. Westmoreland comes the other way. Big block right there. Now, once again, the big block is by Westmoreland. This time he did his job. He's not in the camera, but Westmoreland, the wide receiver, cut down the first defensive back, allowed an extra 10, 15 yard uh, gain. They, they even fooled me. I was looking for a pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, they fool everybody, right? A back to pass as Kaplan throws over the middle of Westmoreland. He has to get out of bounds. He does. They only gain about six yards or seven yards on that play. Boblitz ran him out, and the clock is down to four seconds. The ball is at the 31-yard line. They're 31 yards of the way. They may go for the field goal. I think they will. They're going to bring in Andy Brubaker, who is 5 for 13 in the field goal department. This ball is spotted at the 31. The kick will come from about the 38, so it'll be a 48-yard field goal attempt. He has not kicked one yet from 49 yards of between 39 and 49. He has been unsuccessful, and he is unsuccessful this afternoon. He was 0 for 4 between the 39 and the 49, making him 0 for 5 as the clock runs out to end the first half here. 28 to 6 is our score. Kind of what we expected in the way of the score, though. We figured that East Stroudsburg, I guess, coming in, Steve, has a little uh, the, the stronger team. I, no question about it. And they showed the quick strike offense, which they've featured all season long. And w when you got a big play offense, sometimes the defense doesn't get the credit it deserves. But with that real strong linebacking crew they've got, they've shut down the Millersville ground game. It's been all East Stroudsburg. It certainly has. And when you look at the, the fact that they put the ball in the air pretty quickly and had a 21 to nothing lead there in the first quarter, it looked like it was going to be a long afternoon for Coach Gene Carpenter. Millersville University, Stroudsburg University is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. And we'll return with more coverage. After one big one in the Big Ten, but we'll check out all the scores. First of all, Let's see what we have here. We have 28 to 6. There is East Carolina over Florida. And yet East Stroudsburg leading by 22 at halftime, 28 to 6. And it was Baranek with three touchdown passes in the first half. A 72 yarder to Walker. Walker has two. Uh, he had a 72 yarder, and then he had a one yard run. Let's look at the, the touchdown that made it 21 to nothing. A little uh, razzle, Stroudsburg. little razzle dazzle here. Hand off to Walker. Pitch back and. As we saw so often, watch how the Baranek throws off balance and still puts the ball right on the money. In fact, I don't think he's throwing a pass today that he was planted like he should have been. And you know something, in all honesty, uh, most of the long passes and the completions that he's had, the defenders have been right there, and it's just been about a, a, a you know six, seven inches difference between being a, a deflected pass and a reception. He's put the ball right on the money all day long. That touchdown made it 21 to nothing. The Millersville finally got on the board with 313 left in the half. Well, and this is the culmination of a, was it 14 play drive? It took about seven minutes, and uh, boy, this is just a real, real tough catch. James Westmoreland, Westmoreland making the catch yeah. there. And that was a nine yard, a cap into Westmoreland, who completed a 77 yard drive, as you said. They used seven minutes off the clock. You want to know the, that's a nice shot right there. You want to know the difference between Division One and Division Two football? Look at the number of players. And also look at the stands on the other yeah. side. <laughs> but you know what you'll you'll find on the, on the sidelines? When one of the units is in there, boy, oh boy, the sidelines is just empty. Uh, as we told you earlier, these players uh, play with no financial aid, no athletic scholarships, that is, and uh, they, they play for the love of the game. Well, Baranek already in this game, 14 of 19, 268 yards and three touchdowns. He has completed passes to eight different receivers. That's not unusual. You take a look at their uh, the reception chart. And I don't know if I can count them up that quickly, but <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> far and away, though, Benoit, uh, they've got 107 completions coming in, coming into this ball game as a team, 41 to Scott Benoit. One of the tendencies that they broke 
about three games ago was always go going to Benoit on third in crucial situations. They've scouted themselves one of the things they've tried to get away from. Because the tendency was picked up by the opposing team. Exactly. East Stroudsburg will kick off to start the second half. It'll be Joey Pingator putting the ball on the tee. It'll be Coyne along with Stonewall, the deep man to receive it from for Millersville. They trail 28 to 6. They look like they had something going there just to, toward the end of the first half, but uh, East Stroudsburg came right back and completed a 67-yard drive. Moranic, a six-yard pass to Benoit. This is Joey Pingator. Second half, kickoff. And to go out of bounds, they'll start it again. Charlie, when you think about playing East Stroudsburg in the second half, they're the type of ball club that you had better get early if you're going to get them. Uh, in the first quarter on the season, they've been outscored 28 to 20. But in the third quarter, East Stroudsburg has beaten their opponents 66 to 7. In the fourth quarter, it's pretty much the same story. They've only given up 17 points, and 14 of those have been against the second uh, team defense. So Millersville certainly with their backs to the wall. No question about that. We'll try it once again. This is Coyne, 20, 25, and up to the 29-yard line goes Bobby Coyne. Do you know that Millersville has scored their most points in the third quarter this year? So that's interesting. Well, then. But they, on the other hand. Let's line them up and see what happens, huh? <laughs> They were so successful. East Stroudsburg has only given up seven and right. seven points in the third quarter. Right. So that they were most successful with that quick dive off the tackle position. Let's see if they start doing that uh, right here from the go. You see Kaplan stats for the first half. He's back to pass. First down. He completes it. A short pass to Coin, the fullback, and I think they lost about three yards on that play. Well, that's uh... Miller wouldn't let him get away. Fred Miller, the defensive end from Harleysville, Pennsylvania. And yet a loss of two. It'll be second down and 12. Well, that was an interesting play. It certainly That's was. That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> there was no purpose or direction to it, was there? <laughs> Unless you want to uh, get I'm your sure completion was, stats. I'm, I'm sure <laughs> it was designed to pick up about 10, 15 yards. I just don't know how it'll happen. Westmoreland in motion going to the top of your screen. Down the line. Here's the Stonewall. Stonewall gets back the yards. Lost and picks up an additional couple of yards. Down to about the 34. Stottleberg on the stop along with Tracy Coleman. And Stonewall is shaken up. He is holding his right ankle. Stonewall. Last year averaged 7.3 yards per attempt. Let's see if we can see what happened on that play at the end of it. Well, this is your straight option. They just run straight down the line, get good blocking from the backs, block out on the contained man. There you see he breaks the, the tackle of Tracy Coleman, and oh, great extra effort. And there you saw it was just a defender that landed on his ankle. Coyne and Smith are now in the backfield. Straight ahead, it's Smith. Troy Smith, who played a little in the first half, carried the ball a couple of times. Carried it five times, in fact, in the first half. Calamian Thompson on the stop defensively. So to bring up a fourth down situation. Fourth down and about two. So Mr. Brubaker, as you look at Stonewall being attended to, his right ankle. And believe me, they love to think they could just tape that thing up and, uh, and get him back in the ball no game. No question. Nice punt. Blue Baker comes down to Gerhardt at the 27. Gets out to the outside, 40. Midfield, 45. Still on his feet and run out of bounds at about the 32-yard line by Troy Smith, the fullback. Good return. And they just keep coming and coming and coming, even the specialty units. We're in the third quarter to make that 12.54 remaining. You see the score. 
<laughs> now he's just got one guy to beat right here. He runs over the line, uh, the kicker. And although he, he slowed him up enough so that the pursuit could get in there. Breichen, Breichenbach makes the big big block. Straight ahead, Del Walker. Walker runs over his own man, still on his feet, keeps his balance, gets a first down to the 20-yard line. Costelli finally brought him down. Did you see the balance that he displayed that time? I'll tell you what. Uh, you can see that they possess every offensive weapon and defensive weapon that you need to, to get into the playoffs. 13-yard run to the 21. Take a look at it from the ground level here. Excellent job by Kleinfelter getting down, looking for someone to block. There just wasn't anybody there. <laughs> Benoit in motion once again. Straight ahead is Walker again, and he's dumped Ooh. right at the line of scrimmage. That's Manis. And hanging, I mean, I'm hanging. Sorry. The sophomore from Reading, the nose guard, and he put his nose right in there. No, he the was feet from under him. He was recruited as a high, out of high school as a fullback. Great athlete, 5'11", 205. Those smaller guys, you know, get a a much better chance to get underneath those offensive linemen, especially a center. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, following in the footsteps of the All-Americans who have played that nose guard position for Millersville in the past few years. Walker in motion to pitch to Walker. Down the left side, has some blocking out there, but not a whole lot of yards. A pickup of about five. Cassidy, third and five. Cassidy, Warman, Pashan hanging a bunch of people in on that one. Yes, indeed. Defense swarming. Make it third down and five. The ball just shy of the 15-yard line. They'll mark it at the 16. Of the running plays that East Stroudsburg has in their repertoire, that is the play that most concerned the Millersville defense. They've had contained problems on the year. They didn't shut it down that time. His time. Back to pass, looking for Benoit. Oh! Knocked away. Good defensive play by Brian Westmoreland, the senior from Downingtown, Pennsylvania. Benoit was out there. There, had his hand on the ball momentarily, but Westmoreland knocked it away. Well, this is a timing pattern, and once again, these are these have been the types of passes that the receivers have come come down with in this ball game. Good defensive coverage, pass thrown right on the mark, just went through the hands. It's good. It's got to be getting a little cold down there. It is. The 30, hands, uh, 34 nice. yard field goal attempt now by Pengator. He has kicked them. 47 and 49 yards, so it's well within his range. It's long enough, and it is good. Whoa. That his was pretty eighth, close. Wasn't eighth it? field goal of the year. He's 8 for 10 in the field goal department, and that increases the score to 31 to 6. And we're in the third quarter with the and they're fighting for this uh, championship. The winner of the Eastern Division plays the Western Division champion. And last year it was East Stroudsburg over Edinburgh in that PSAC championship. Pingator, who just kicked a 34-yard field goal, kicks it off. The deep man, Coyne, chasing it down right near the sideline, picks it up at the 8-yard line. And still on his feet, struggles out to the 31-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10, Millersville. The ball will be spotted. Well, they're going to mark it right at the 30. First guy down, forcing the action. Tracy Coleman. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd mention his name. Number 10. First down and 10 at their own 20. Millersville trailing 31 to 6. Make it the own 30. Down the line. Kaplan keeps it. Turns the corner. Then pitches. <laughs> he pitches off to Coyne, and Coyne is very close to a first down, about a yard shy. Well, this is what they'll teach the tailback. If that quarterback turns upfield, always be in a position to get the pitch. And here's the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Eastern Division standings right now. There's East Stroudsburg out in front, tied with Bloomsburg. Bloomsburg is in action today, and they are playing uh, Cheney. And Cheney, as you see, is in last place. There's the Western Division, Clarion, playing Indiana. The two top schools in the Western Division, the winner, plays the winner of the Eastern Division in the championship. Clarion 6-0 on the year, too. Yes, indeed. Almost a super catch on the far sideline by the fullback, Coyne, coming out of the backfield. Good defense over there. And he looks like he's a little slow getting up. Coleman was defending, along with Scott, Bill Scott. And that championship game is called the state game. 
and uh, these, these two, two teams, teams yeah, yeah they love this, it. Yeah, from this, uh, from the eastern side of the conference, these are the two teams that generally end up there. Ironically enough, in rushing, team rushing, Millersville is ranked fourth in the conference, second behind Westchester uh -oh. as a fumble, and they get the recovery. A man on the spot there to pick up the fumble, number 54, and that was Austin, or Hent Hiltner, the right guard, Hiltner. Let's look at it once again. Well, this is that dive play that's been successful. They run inside the end. Coleman, the man on the hit, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Who else? I like this guy. He's everywhere. It's a first down. Down the line. Kaplan keeps it. Picks up a yard. Well defensed. To the 45-yard line. It was Calamia, the junior, along with Riken back on the stop. I think what you'll notice uh, when you take a look at the option is generally what Millersville will try to do is run the option to the split end side. They'll use a twin formation, stretch out the defense, and just force you to play more of the field. So you would expect it to come towards us as you're looking at the screen. Second and eight, Kaplan back to pass, runs out of the pocket. He is oh. broke down. He did not get away from number 90, defensively Bill Camp, the junior from Wildwood, New Jersey. All PSA team, PSAC first team is a freshman. Well, he's the kind of, uh, he's the kind of kid that does everything 150%. Obviously got a good pair of hands. I'll tell you what, when those defensive linemen get in there, they don't want to miss a chance of getting the quarterback. No, indeed. Because in two a days, when these are the guys working out in the trenches, the quarterbacks are kneeling down, throwing the ball back and forth to each other, strengthening those arms. <laughs> oh, no question about it. All PSAC is a freshman. And he made second team last year after missing the first four games. Westmoreland in motion. Kaplan throws, has a complete. And this is Westmoreland who has the touchdown reception. He's inside midfield. But it's still going to be a long way away from first down. Bobby Dodd makes the stop. And that'll bring up a fourth down situation. That'll bring on Brubaker, the punter. Andy Brubaker, Chris Gerhardt, drops deep for Char East Stroud. Charlie, you sit here and you keep wondering, hey, they're going to have to just start throwing the ball on every down. Uh, they've stuck with their game plan so far. Blue Baker, short punt. Gerhardt picks it up inside the 10. And he's down at the 16, 17 yard line. 31 to six is our score in East Stroudsburg. And he won nine to seven to Texas. <laughs> now this is probably the most diversified offensive attack that that good Texas defense has faced. Well, stay tuned for that. That immediately follows our game right here on CBS. First down and 10. And here's Baranek faking, throwing, has a man there, but it's behind him. Kelleher, the intended receiver, the tight end. And it was Austin who almost got a chance to pick it off. And Dell Walker's beside himself. It looked like the exact same uh, pattern they ran earlier when he caught the touchdown pass, and he was wide open again. There were only four receivers wide open on that pattern. Only four receivers. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason that was incomplete was it was behind the man. That's right. It'll be second down and 10 at the 17. We're in the third quarter, 8.06 the time remaining. Again, the sprint out with Whoa. nowhere to go. But Pishon and Hangen come in and sack the quarterback. Defensively, I guess uh, Coach Carpenter gave them a good talking to at halftime because they're playing a lot better here. Well, like I say, they, uh, they've had a good pass rush all day long. Take a look at the backup uh, quarterback Hangin. Dave Hangin. He's a freshman. That's his brother. That's the nose guard uh, uh, on defense. The sophomore. Third and 20. Incomplete. Kelleher, the intended receiver. Overthrown. It'll be fourth down. Scott Warman applied a little pressure there to the quarterback. So, Moranek comes off. We may see a new quarterback when we come back after this punt from Pingator. The deep men for Millersville are Bobby Coyne and Jeff Raber. Whoa. 
did not see a flag go down, and it's Coyne at the 33-34 yard line. 38-yard punt. And good field position for Millersville. Great field position. Look at this, will you? Halftime, 14-7. Remember now, Kentucky, 0-9-1 last year. That's right. Uh, Claiborne has to be considered for that Coach of the Year honors at this stage of the season anyway. And straight ahead, back in the lineup, is Stonewall. Here's Maryland over Duke, 17-3, ACC battle in the second quarter. Lehigh leading Army. Now over Columbia. It'll be second down and seven. Slippery Rock. Another PSAC school. Kaplan is still in there, quarterback. This is Troy Smith, who could not find the footing to turn the corner. Bob Blitz kept him down. Edinburgh, who was the Western Division champs last year, leading Buffalo State 21 to nothing. It's Bloomsburg over Cheney, 10-7. Mansfield being trounced by Towson State, another one of our regional games on CBS today. It's third down and 10 after that loss of three on the last play by Troy Smith. The ball at the 34-yard line. This is Westmoreland in motion. Kaplan, play action, freezes the defense a little bit, maybe, still on his feet, runs, throws, has a man out there, he can't oh. get to it. Great effort, though, by Mark Lumpkin. He tried to make a diving catch to, of, that, of that pass, but just couldn't catch up to it. Let's look at it once again. Well, these are the type of plays that generally will result in a big play. You see, once again, uh, he has real quick feet, able to get away from the, the, the coverage. At this point, he's sort of motioning <laughs> Lumpkin to go, go. If he'd have put it up just a little bit longer, Lumpkin had the defender's beat. He could have run under it. 51-yard but... field goal attempt now by Brubaker. Again, between the 39 and 49, he's 0 for 4, 0 for 1, over 50. This will be short. He is 0 for 2 this afternoon in the field goal department. So again, the Millersville team is stopped short. And they trail 31 to 6. And don't forget, near the conclusion of today's CBS Sports NCAA broadcast, Steve and I will have the opportunity of selecting the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each of the teams. As you know, Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. And the MVPs receive certificates from Chevrolet that acknowledge their outstanding performances. That's near the end of today's contest. Meanwhile, it's first down and 10 for East Stroudsburg at their own 34-yard line. And they try to go off the left side. Running with the ball that time is Mike Sebeski. Hangin. Well, on the stop. And his name keeps coming up, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It might come up in the fourth quarter as MVP. It's second down and 10. Pass knocked or thrown away over the head of the intended receiver. I, I don't know if I think uh, Ryan Westmoreland might have gotten a hand on it or something. Well, I'm not sure if Baranek is losing concentration a little bit or not, but... Uh, He's 0 for 4 in the second half, yeah. I'll tell you that, after and, a fine first half. And his people have been open. It's not a bad uh, <laughs> not a bad day, but in the second half he's not completed a pass. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to see Diskin get a chance here pretty soon. Kelleher in the slot to the right. Benoit is split wide to the right. Baranic throws. Incomplete. Benoit had it. Normally you see him make that catch, but he did not hold on. Westmoreland, along with Fashan, was covering. See now here's the situation. If they keep coming out throwing it and stopping the clock with, with incompletions, you can get back in the ball game. But uh, Millersville's got to come out and put some points on the board. I, I got to believe they got to put the ball in the air. Pingator is back to punt it away. Ooh. Almost blocked. Did you see 
Let me see if we can get the number of that kid who climbed. Who was that that climbed the back of somebody? I believe that was Westmoreland who climbed over somebody's back up there and almost blocked it. Or either it was Sanchez, maybe at 26, Sanchez. Watch him. S Sanchez is the backup cornerback. Look at him in the air. Think he could be a high jumper? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, and you know what happens this year in college football, as opposed to last year, if you get blocked into the kicker, it's roughing the kicker yeah. down. And it's still your responsibility to not to run into the guy. Right. But he took a heck of a chance that time, but still... Well, they got to pull out some stops now. <laughs> he sure pulled out, tried to pull out one that time. So now, at their own 34-yard line, Millersville gets the ball. Kaplan. Coin around the left side to the 40-yard line, a gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Bill Camp and Cal Thompson on the stop. And tomorrow, National Football League action on CBS. The Lions of Detroit against the Redskins of Washington. The Lions have won their last two games, but the Redskins have the highest scoring team in the NFL. And it all begins with the NFL today, 12.30 Eastern. Of course, Detroit's beaten Chicago and uh, Green Bay the last two weeks. Teams that are up and down, but Billy Sims is starting to play a little bit. He's now. back. He's back in the lineup. Here's Kaplan, pitch back to Stonewall, he and he down. loses a yard after the pitch back. But great play by Thompson. Cal again. Thompson and Tracy Coleman also in there. That's a name we've been mentioning a lot today, isn't it? Well, you take a 6'2", 210-pound linebacker who's quick enough to run with the backs and the receivers, strong enough to play against the linemen. Uh, no wonder he's been all-conference for two years. Having himself a great year. Third down and two. The ball at the 41-yard line. Their own 41. This is the fourth possession in the second half for Millersville. They are 6 for 13 in third down conversions. Here's a third down play. Westmoreland has it. Has the first down. Across midfield or right at the midfield stripe, Cal Thompson on the stop. Well, this is the sprint out pattern that they like to run. This time uh, it gets open towards the sidelines. There you see the linebacker ready to, to make the tackle should the quarterback turn it up the field. Eight-yard gain right. at midfield, first down and 10. Millersville trailing 31 to 6, 327 remaining in the third quarter. Westmoreland in motion, left to right. Kaplan sprints out to the right. Open. Throws, and he has it complete on the far side to Lumpkin. Mark Lumpkin, the sophomore from York, Pennsylvania, he was covered by Tracy Coleman, and the ball was drilled in there very nicely. It'll bring up a second down after the gain of seven. Second and three. We've talked about Coleman a little bit. He's probably the most improved player in the entire East Stroudsburg program. Learning the position last year and this year, now beginning to assert himself as a, and, and becoming a great player. In Under position. three minutes left, third quarter. Kaplan on the option. Flag is down. We may see holding. He's down to the 40-yard line. Stottleberg made the stop. But let's see what the penalty flag is. Reichenbach also in there on the stop. Illegal use of hands against Millersville. They have not been penalized much in this ball game. In fact, this is only their fifth penalty. They would like to keep it down less than that. Coming into the game, they were penalized an average of seven times a game, an average of 61.3 yards a game. A little use to the hands on the offense, still second down. There's Gene Carpenter, 13th year. Last year, they were 5 4 and 1, 4 and 2 in the conference. to pass as Kaplan throws, has it to complete to Lumpkin. Lumpkin is on his feet, still going, and inside the 15-yard line to about the 14 goes Mark Lumpkin. He finally got loose today. 34 yards, Chuck Reese made the stop. Well, this is the type of pass pattern I think they have to start running to get back in the ball game. They wanted to get the ball to Lumpkin coming into the contest. They had four receivers out on this pattern. They had them spread from sideline to sideline, opened up the middle on the slant, and it was a well-timed pass. Back.
That is the second reception for Lumpkin. This is Stonewall trying to turn the corner. He's run out of bounds at about the 13, 12 yard line by Bobby Dodd. Bounds, Let's watch the pursuit defensively by East Stroudsburg. Well, the defense does just a great job of stringing this play out. They never get it, give him a chance to run up the, uh, run up the middle. There you see Thompson's got a beat on him. In comes Dodd from uh, from the end to the end line, they had a, a, a defensive, defensive player in, in position to make the tackle. Gain of one, second down nine. Slot right, Westmoreland. Lumpkin also out there. Straight ahead, they hand off to the big guy, Troy Smith, who battles inside the 10-yard line before Bill Camp, the junior from Wildwood, New Jersey, made the stop along with Chuck Reese, a sophomore from Eastern Pennsylvania, Larry Holmes, Holmes out. And they're running the ball a lot better. There's Troy Smith. Troy out of Spring Grove, Pennsylvania. It'll be third down and six after that gain of three. Ball inside the 10. Kaplan, who's gone all the way at quarterback, a sophomore from Glenside, PA. Going to the air. Threw it to the outside. If he'd have thrown it inside, he might have had a chance to complete it to Lumpkin. Something looked funny on I know. I, I, uh, it I might have been a pick play. And there are legal pick plays. And I think that was one of those pick plays. It didn't work. <laughs> but it they, looked to me like uh, like Westmoreland stopped. And if he'd have continued on his route to the sidelines, he'd have been open. Because Kaplan came in, Westmoreland went out. And now on fourth down, I think they're going to go for it. They are. This is a fourth down and six situation. Now the ball have... just inside the 10. They give straight ahead to Stonewall. Hard play to understand. And they're stopped. They are stopped at about the eight-yard line. Well, Stonewall took a, took a big hit from the, the linebackers, I believe. Was well, also in there, Calamia and Camp were in there. And you see Stonewall still down. Second time today that he's uh, been shaken up. And don't forget, coming up next, the Texas Longhorns, right after our game, ranked number two in the nation against ninth-rated Southern Methodists. And, you know, Texas has played one heck of a schedule when you consider they've played Auburn on the road, they've played Arkansas on the road, beat them handily last week. You saw that on CBS. And uh, when they played Oklahoma, of course, that ball game was in Dallas. So uh, they've played a tough schedule. Pat Hayden, Gary Bender will be there for that one. That's in Dallas. That's a big game coming up immediately following our game here on CBS. A minute and 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter here. And it's a 31-6 game. You may also see uh, Brent Musburg and Eric Parsegian on the NCAA today. As you look at the coach from Millersville, there he is, Carpenter. Not having a successful afternoon, Gene Carpenter, his counterpart, Denny Dowds, done a fine job in his 10th year here. He likes it here. He said he's had opportunities to leave, and he likes this this this, this part of the country. He likes uh, living here. He, he said he's an hour and a half from New York City. He can go see a play. He can go down to Philadelphia two hours and see the Eagles or the Flyers play or somebody in 76ers. Walk out, out of the door, door, catch all the, your, your the trout, trout limit in 15 minutes. <laughs> Go skiing uh, up in the mountains. He loves it here. Oh, it's a beautiful area. It's a beautiful area. And I think, you know, when you talk about longevity in terms of success in a program, you take a look at Dow's been here eight years as an assistant, 10 years as a head coach. And I think what happens is, you you know, you get something going, going and they certainly have that here. You understand the league. Uh, no question that when you when you get a staff that that stays on like that you can pretty much be assured of, of success well mr. Stonewall is still down on the field hopefully it's not too serious but they can ill afford to lose him he's their all-time leading rusher and score and he is on his feet that's a good sign Oh, Colorado leading Nebraska. How long will that last? Well, you know, last year that that was a 2014 ball game in the fourth quarter until Nebraska uh, widened it to four, uh, 
final score, I believe, was 40-14. So Colorado <laughs> played them, played them tough last year. At least for the first couple touchdowns, yeah. anyhow, right? Illinois over Purdue. Illinois next week against Michigan. Yes, uh, and Illinois really had a, an excellent, excellent season. We'll get that, will you? <laughs> Doesn't get any better, huh? At their own seven, East Stroudsburg with the ball. That's Benoit in motion. And the pitch off the left side. And that is Sebeski, the junior from Pittston, Pennsylvania. And we may see a fumble. Let's see. It may have been a fumble on the play. I believe it was, but uh, East Stroudsburg recovered, and the whistle had blown. 48 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It'll be second down and nine. The ball at the nine. We understand Stonewall has an injured shoulder. His injured left shoulder. This is on the left side of Sapesky. Across. Duck. Was that Duck? Yes, Duck across the 20 to about the 22 and a first down. Dan Duck. In fact, we have uh, a duck at our truck. We do. <laughs> somebody, somebody does a good duck imitation in the truck. I, don't... I wouldn't want to call it a name. <laughs> First down. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter here in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Our score, 31 to 6. East Stroudsburg over Millersville. Millersville University, East Stroudsburg University, an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports Park Stadium in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, with East Stroudsburg leading Millersville University 31 to 6. It's second down and nine. Ball is at the 22-yard line. East Stroudsburg has the ball as you look at Denny Dowds. His team enjoying the big advantage right now. Charlie has been a relatively quiet second half. It certainly has. Three, three points. That's it. Three points on the board, second half. Gene Carpenter. Not a good afternoon for him. Back to pass, Moranic. Throws long, has a man out there. Emma! Costelli on the stop. Well, Charlie Dows must have must have heard me up here when I told him nothing really was happening. He comes out with a big play. Oh, look at this! Really, the defender was there. Westmoreland just turned the wrong way and lost sight of the ball. And a good move, 51-yard gain on the pass play. Moranic to Joe Emma. First down and 10. 37-yard line. Benoit is in motion. Moranic wants to pass again. Throws incomplete. Benoit, the intended receiver, covering defensively. I believe that was Costelli, the strong safety. Well, he just threw that ball away. Nobody was open. Second down, 10. Emma back in the ball game. There's the stats on Moranic. Three touchdowns, 319 yards passing. Last year against Millersville, he passed for 452 yards, four touchdowns. He was intercepted three times. This is Sebesky turning the corner, trying to anyhow, and he struggles down inside the 25 to about the 23-yard line. Costelli, along with Pashan, making the stop. Well, I think when they run the replay of this in the highlight films, uh, Dan Duck's going to be a little disappointed that he didn't cut up inside his block. Watch, right here, 33. He cuts upside inside that block. I think he might have a successful play. It'll be third down and six after the gain of four by Mike Sebeski. 
three of nine in third down conversions. And here's Moranic going to the air. Throws, but Noid has it. He has the first down inside the 15-yard line to about the 13. It was Westmoreland on the stop. Well, this is what the quarterback looks at as he goes back. It was a real well-run pattern. It looked initially like he was going to run a sideline route, then he cut back inside. This is just an excellent offensive passing team. Ten-yard gain on the play. Benoit with his fourth reception of the day. Long count. Sebeski cuts back inside. Still on his feet. And battling down close to the five-yard line. That looked like a busted play, and he made something out of nothing. Well, Sebeski's noted for a, as being a, a tackle breaker. He's a hard runner, and as you see, he does what, what most backs don't do anymore. He hits and spins. Well, number two rusher on the team behind Del Walker. Well, you can see it. It looked like they had a little stunt on. Defensive line Bob Mark was slanted outside. The play was shut down immediately. He spun, kept his balance. We saw him do that earlier in the ball game. Ends up making a good game. Second down. A couple of yards to go for first down. Ball at the five. Moranic wants to throw. Incomplete over everybody. Closest man to it was Tim Bishop as far as the intended receiver was concerned. Austin was defending for Millersville. It is third down and two. The ball at the five. Hey, it's the not the NFL. <laughs> Wait a minute, are we doing the right game? <laughs> Sebesky, the second man in the eye. Kelleher goes in motion. And the pitch to Sebesky inside the five. He will not get the first down. Back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down and two. Moses Austin, along with the, the free safety, along with the linebacker, Jim Cassidy, came up and stopped it cold. It's fourth down and two. The crowd wants him to go for it. Call timeout. That's what they're going to do is call timeout. Moranic will come over to the sideline and talk things over with Coach Denny Downs. We'll take a time out here. We're in East Stroudsburg, and it's been East Stroudsburg. All NBA basketball gets underway, and Ralph Sampson makes his debut as a member of the Houston Rockets. And only going against the San Antonio Spurs, Artis Gilmore and George Gervin, the Iceman, along with Tommy Heinsohn, who welcome him to CBS this year. It's next Saturday as we look at fourth down two. Baranek throws incomplete. It's going to go over to Millersville, intended for Benoit. Baranek threw that ball exactly where he had to. Threw it low, threw it to the outside. Benoit just wasn't ready. Benoit had made his cut, was standing flat-footed, and when the ball was thrown, he just couldn't get leverage and, and get over there in time. It might have been a question, even if he had caught it, whether it had been a touchdown, but at least he would have had the first down. And that was the most important thing. So they are stopped on fourth down. Millersville takes over first down and 10 at their own five-yard line. And they go to the outside. And still running with the ball is Bobby Coyne. And Coyne <laughs> shows some determined effort. But they fumble, I believe. Let's see. He may have fumbled the ball at the 15. And I believe Scott Moblins came up with it. What a turn of events there. After a great run by Coyne, he coughed up the ball. Boblitz came up with it. And it'll be East Stroudsburg's ball. Let's see if we can see it. I didn't see it. It's a shame when you fumble the ball after such a great uh, second effort. Let's see if maybe they take the ball from him right here. I believe that's what happens. Uh, Let's see. Look well, I'll tell you what. I, I don't know. I might have to blow the whistle and, and call that play dead. Yeah, Diskin gets a chance. Diskin in a quarterback. He wants to go to the air. There he goes, incomplete. Intended for Bishop. A little overthrow. 
It'll be second down. The ball at the 15-yard line. Westmoreland covering. And here's the difficult part in a ball game like this when you have such a great backup quarterback, Diskin. You want him to stay sharp. Well, he's a passing quarterback. So you've got to keep putting the ball in the air to get him the playing time, that the type of playing time he needs to stay sharp. Uh, you can be indicted for, for putting it on him too much, but hey, he's got to throw the ball. No question, and he wants to go to the air once again. Swings it out to the right side, and this is Walker. Walker runs back in the middle of everybody, and he loses about seven yards. Pashan makes the stop. After all of that, the five will make it six-yard loss on that. Make it third down, 16. Very slow developing play, but I think that if he would have turned the uh, ball upfield, he would have found that the blocking was there. Let's check it out. Now, if he turns it straight, straight up field, up, right. right up the field. He you tried to go see, uh, east and west instead of north yeah. and south. Heart lines there. Uh, the defensive back hit was covering deep on the pass pattern. It, it should have been a better play. Third and 16. We're in the fourth quarter. Diskin throws incomplete. Incomplete. That pass. Broke. Put uh, Jeff Hannes put his hand up in the face of the quarterback. Mark Smith also in there. Dan Duck, I believe it was the intended receiver. As you look at the time remaining in the fourth quarter here. And Joey Pingator will come in. He'll try to put through his second field goal of the day. He is the leading scorer in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. This is a 38-yard attempt. His previous field goal was from 34 yards. The kick is up. And it is good. 38-yard field goal attempt by Pingator is good. Four to six ball game. It's been all East Stroudsburg. So Texas, well, they have one of the top ranked defenses in the nation. While uh, SMU has one of the top rated quarterbacks in Lance McElhenney, they're going 21 straight. So it'll be a good one. Immediately following our game right here on CBS. Pingator to kick off. This is Coyne. And Coyne still on his feet. Bounces to the outside. 30, 35, 40. And 46-yard line goes Bobby Coyne. Good return. Bill Scott finally brought him down 43 yards on the return. And this time, I didn't let him, he didn't let him steal the ball from him. Sure Boy, this, this kid can really break tackles, can't he? Let's look at it again. Well, he finds the hole, and then it's just determination after that. And really, had he not slipped up after the last tackle right there, I think he might have uh, taken this thing all the way. He slips and loses his balance. Had one man to beat right there. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. Kaplan gone all the way at quarterback. Back to pass. In trouble. Will not get this one off. He is brought down by Bill Camp, a junior from Wildwood, New Jersey. I believe that's his second sack this afternoon. A loss of five on the play. It'll be second and 15. The ball spotted at the 41. Again, Millersville with their backs, which have been against the wall all afternoon, no better position right now. Jody Miller is in the slot to the left side. They throw back on the screen to the left. Oh, great play. Bobby Coyne on the reception. Bob Litz is out there. Bob Litz, a great play. Defensively, Greg Carpenter. We talked about the great linebackers. You look at Bob Litz on one outside, a two-year starter, great athletic ability, uh, experience. Reichenbach, one of the best in the East. Reese plays with such great intensity. Thompson, all-conference two years. You know, the strength of a defense is generally in its linebackers. And when you play this 44-type defense, uh, hmm, pretty successful. Third and 10 situation. He was going for number 22, Lumpkin, who pulled up short. And way out there was Bobby Dodd, who almost came up with the second interception of the day. We'll look at some other scores from around the NCAA today. Our score is 34 to 6 here. No, let's don't look at him. Okay. Let's look at Brubaker <laughs> punting away, huh? <laughs> Andy Brubaker. I can. On fourth down. Chris Gerhardt, the deep man for East Stroudsburg. Ooh. 
This bounces into the hands of Gerhardt, who picks it up. He's down at the 20-yard line. And we'll be back here in the fourth quarter. There's 9.26 remaining after that 34. They put 47 points on the board Monday night, but they still lose by one to the Packers, right? Well, it all begins tomorrow with the NFL Today, 12.30 Eastern time right here on CBS. First and 10 at their own 20. Charlie Diskin in a quarterback. He throws, and he has it complete on the far sideline, and that is to Joe Emma. Joe Emma has been doing a fine job today from the receiving end. Let's What's more on the stop? Okay, here we go. Nebraska finally coming from behind, believe it or not. Well, people have been playing Nebraska pretty tough here lately. They certainly uh -oh. have been. West Virginia. Uh, Stettler must be getting tough. Starting to get hot, huh? Warming yeah. up a little bit. Six yards to go on second down for East Stroudsburg. Straight ahead, handoff. And trying to get some running room was Jim Cope, a freshman from Belvedere, New Jersey. As you look at six-rated Florida leading Mississippi State by seven. There's a good game there, huh? Kentucky playing Georgia tough again this year. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's the one. That's going to make Steve's heart flutter. Boy. That's, uh, uh. <laughs> Steve gets upset when he sees Michigan like that. tied or trailing. I don't like that one. <laughs> let's, let's check with the guy keeping score. Maybe that's a mistake. Charlie Diskin throws it long. Joe Emma tries to make the reception. Incomplete. Defensively was Jeff Raber. He tried to adjust Emma and come in, but Raber would not allow him to get to the ball. So it falls incomplete. It brings up a fourth down. That brings up Joey Pengator as Illinois and Purdue are tied in the second quarter. And Merlin leading Duke by 21. Of course, you know, Purdue's played very well the last couple of weeks against Ohio State and against Iowa. Did you see some other scores? That was a quick final. game, huh? That was, 37 that over in a hurry. It's over. Pengator. Blocked! by Millersville. Recovered, maybe for first maybe. down, was it? Sanchez got in there. Now, let's see where they parked the ball because they had to get to the 30 for a first down. But I, I think on a block kick, you it's, still, it's, it's always going to change position okay. regardless of what That was a fourth down. Thank you. I'm usually the one that forgets the rules. I get the, I got you this You week. got me that time. Okay, <laughs> it's going to be Millersville getting a break on the block punt by Sanchez, who almost got one earlier. Remember how he climbed up over the top? He got one this time. At the Reading PA, he's back to pass on first down. He was listed as the third string quarterback, but the second string quarterback, we understand, quit the team this week. So he's in there playing, and he loses, what, about five yards on the play. Stottleberg, along with Camp, chasing down. Boy, and he had a receiver open on that sideline, actually coming back to the ball, but sprinting left, a right-handed quarterback, he couldn't set himself in time to throw the pass. 8-0-2 remaining in the game. You know, you take a look at the score, but let's give the Millersville defensive unit a lot of credit in this second half. Uh, they've given up two field goals, one a result of an offensive turnover. Second and 15, hanging at quarterback. Just coming into the game, only his second play. Throws, has it complete on the near sideline to Eric Andreev, a sophomore split in. He's from Effort of Pennsylvania. Effort is up near Burden Hand. Right. <laughs> Tracy Coleman with the, <laughs> with the stop. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> you, you got <laughs> The ball is at the 30-yard line, just inside the 30. It'll be third down and seven. So, Mr. Hangen completes the second, the second play, the first pass that he threw. On the quarterback draw, Stottleberg says no. <laughs> Stottleberg just wrapped him up and threw him to the ground. Reichenbach also in there to help out. It'll bring, bring up a, a fourth down situation. You look at the time remaining. 7.23. Here we are, Nebraska. 14-6 over Colorado. A lot of people questioning whether they should still be rated number one. We'll know after Texas SMU today, huh? West Virginia over Penn, or leading, or trailing Penn State. Oklahoma leading Iowa State. Yeah. Iowa State was leading in that ball game earlier. Well, now remember, last year was 13-3 Oklahoma, and the year before, that was a tie ball game, Iowa State-Oklahoma. 
Angen back to pass here. It's a fourth down play. Slips down. It'll turn the ball over. Well, I don't know if the quarterback change made much of a difference there. Bill well, you know, it's that that, that uh, protection's really breaking down now. Kid looks like he's got some pretty quick feet. Temple in Delaware. Temple out of Philadelphia. Tubby Raymond's team down there in Delaware. Well, if you look at Gene Carpenter, time running out on him. Six minutes and 50 seconds left to play. Charlie Diskin still in a quarterback for East Stroudsburg. Israel on the near side, the tight end. And he handed off, I believe that was Tony Hall. That was Tony Hall, the sophomore from Louise, Delaware. Jim Cassidy made the stop. And immediately following our game, right here on CBS, well, Texas and SMU. It should be an exciting contest from Dallas, Texas. Gary Bender and Pat Hayden will bring you all the action from there. This is Charlie Neal along with Steve Brody in East Stroudsburg, with East Stroudsburg leading by a score of 34 to 6 and second down and 8. Hump, 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 hump. Whoa, somebody wanted to get into that pass pattern in a hurry, didn't he? <laughs> That's what the lineman takes a licking, too. It certainly did. Get those defenders coming across the line in a game like this, boy. Chris Mann was the man who moved too soon, number 81. A lot of other people, a lot of second and third string people will start seeing now the score like this. At least for the home team. Yes. Now, the visitor can't bring enough people to play much beyond their second unit. No question about that. 45 players. Banshore is getting loud, isn't it? Charlie Diskin throwing. Almost intercepted. Ooh. Knocked up in the air by Jim Cassidy, the linebacker out of Norwood, Pennsylvania. He batted it up in the air to bring up a third down situation. Third and 13. Now, the Cassidy's, uh, Cassidy's a player that led the tackle chart for the first week uh, last week. They project him as a, another outstanding linebacker down the road. And this defensive unit, for the most part, is a young one. Sophomore, sophomore, freshman across the front line. Three returning linebackers. Uh, so their best football down the road. That's man in motion. Diskins printing out to the left side, and he will not get away from number 51. That is Chris Hangett, a sophomore, the nose guard from Reading, PA, who has played a pretty good game defensively. Well, he's going to get my vote as the MVP. we got to do that pretty soon. This kid's uh, been in on so many tackles, made plays up the middle. You can see that's tremendous speed for a nose guard. It certainly is. There you Remind you, he was a high school fullback. Just a great athlete. Number one sack man on the defensive unit. Pingator into Ponotagoy once again. And they're coming after him. <laughs> he finally got it off after having the scramble. He gets it out of bounds. And he kicked the spiral, too. He certainly did. He became a runner, so there was no roughing the kicker on that play. <laughs> I think, even though they I think you can see a smile through the face mask, too. He knew this one was going to be blocked. Minus two yards on this one, even though he did get it away. Watch this. Kicks a spiral. It's almost like a pass. Incomplete. <laughs> That'll ruin his average, though. Heffelfinger was the guy who really applied the pressure to him. So now Millersville with a first down and 10. Again, each they seem to be getting closer by way because of the defense. That's right. Their defense has been the best offense almost. That's right, because the offense hasn't done anything. Hagen, Hagen still in there. Quarterback stands in there. Runs out of the pocket. If he can get a block, has some running room, cuts it inside. He's inside the 15 to the 10-yard line. And it's a first down for the quarterback, the freshman Dave Hagen. Well, it's going to be his first taste of real live action here. Can't get the pass off, lose the rush. Now shows us some pretty decent running ability. Picks up the two blockers. Takes a good lick right there. The only thing he's got to learn immediately is to when, when to go down. Soison made the stop. First down 10 at the 11-yard line. And the handoff or 
did he keep it? I, I think he kept it. Or was it Troy Smith? No. Sure. I think the quarterback ended up with I'll that. I'll tell one. you, I wasn't <laughs> sure who had the ball that time. In fact, it, they marked it right at the line of scrimmage. It if it had been Smith, he'd have had about a five-yard gain. So Hangin did hold on to the ball that time. But, but he was stopped imagine. immediately by Chuck Melton, the defensive end, number 97. And he's a big kid. Well, you can imagine how tough it is on the defense to dissect that type of play because it's such a quick hitting type. It certainly is. Here is hanging, rolling right. Throws has a man well open. Touchdown. Touchdown. Complete to number 42, Jody Miller, a junior from Hellerstown, Pennsylvania. So an 11-yard touchdown pass, the freshman. And Miller is a backup receiver. There he is, number 42. In fact, he hadn't played enough to even have any stats on him this year. That may be his first reception and first, I'm sure it's his first touchdown of the year. It's probably his first reception of the year. In to attempt the point after, Allaire going for the two-point conversion. This is the first time this year that they have attempted the two-point conversion. Hanging. Throws. Incomplete. The lineman standing there says, I do not want it. Number 72, Ed Elliott, the right tackle, a freshman hey, from yeah, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Hey, you might as well catch it and hope that the referee doesn't pick it up, you know? I mean, what the heck? The only trailing 34 to, what, 12, right? There you see a replay of the, uh, of the touchdown. Well, well-thrown pass. Take a look at it from the end zone. This guy was this guy was wide open right off the line of scrimmage and nice play. Congratulations. <laughs> Thought they were trying to add some points without him putting it in the end zone there. They're just testing you, Charlie. They certainly were. Ruth Baker to kick it off. Bill Walker's the deep man for East Stroudsburg. So Millersville. Got to be onside kick, doesn't it? No, no. It doesn't look that way. They were expecting it because that's why Walker was the deep man. They had all sure-handed people up front. Oh! Fumbles! And it's recovered by Millersville. Sanchez, who blocked the punt, I told came you up with the recovery. I told you it was an onside kick. It was just a little deeper. <laughs> a deep onside kick. Yeah. <laughs> look at Sanchez. He's happy. Well, this is this is where you wonder, hey, I don't know, should you be should be, you should you be allowed to pick up a fumble in college football and run it in? I think you should. The hit was made by Mike Gector, a junior from Sinking Springs, PA, and he saw his team sinking a little bit and he figured he'd do something there. So now the ball again, they keep moving 10 yards closer. They're at the 12 yard line. They're starting at the 12. The last time they started at the 22. The previous time at the 32. And it's hanging. Stopped by Fred Miller. Also Bill Camp on the stop. So they're going to try to make it respectable here. As they move it down, about four-yard gain on the play. It'll be second down and six. The ball at the eight-yard line. They can get a first down without scoring, and the cheerleaders are saying, we want a touchdown. Straight ahead, they went with Bobby Coyne. Bobby Coyne inside the five to about the four. 318 remaining, Riken back on the stop. It'll be third down and two. Andreev goes far to the left side. Jody Miller is in the slot to the left. He caught the touchdown pass a few moments ago. Hangin looking to the side. Andreev out there. He can't get it. He was turned the wrong way. He tried to make a move back to the ball. He couldn't get to it. It's fourth down. Well, I think this ball is supposed to be thrown all the way into the corner. It was thrown behind him. That's why he had to turn around and just couldn't get there. Eric Andreev making a, an attempt to make the reception. Now, Mark Lumpkin comes off. Andreev goes out. Lumpkin with the play from coach. That's Gene Carpenter, fourth and two. Ball at the four. Lumpkin is on this side. 
the bottom of your screen. They run it left. Nowhere to go. Dropped immediately by Chuck Reese. Was the quarterback hanging, so they can't put it in the end zone. I'll tell you, the offense has been almost non-existent for Millersville today. Well, there you see 43. It was the it was the the tailback that missed that block. And I don't know who it was. And I don't want to, so I can't accuse anybody, but he was supposed to pick up the blitzing linebacker so they could run the option and miss the block. Now the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from Millersville, Chris Hangen. He's the nose guard who's played a whale of a game for East Stroudsburg, the quarterback Andy Baranek, who's thrown three touchdown passes today. Diskin is in there right now, and the check-in amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen fields. So congratulations to those two young men, Mr. Baranek, the quarterback from East Stroudsburg, and also Mr. Hangin, Chris Hangin, the sophomore nose guard from Reading, Pennsylvania, from Millersville, 224, and the clock running. And that's the time remaining in the ball game. Our score is 34 to 12, and Charlie Diskin runs the offense now for Denny Dowds. It's second down, a four-yard to go. Charlie Diskin rolls left, still on his feet, and scrambles out close to a first down. He was caught from behind by Chris Hangan. Hangan did a great job of coming up from behind and making, bringing him down. Shoestring tackle, first down, though, for East Stroudsburg. One of the things, you know, you were talking about the fact that Diskin and Baranek had battled for the job. Baranek got hurt early in the year. Denny Dowd says if a guy earns a position, he keeps it, regardless of when he gets hurt, if he gets hurt or not. Where a lot of teams, you get hurt, you have to earn your way back into the lineup. But he doesn't believe in that. That's right. As soon as Baranek got better, he was a starting quarterback. Um, I guess if you're a starter, you like to play for a coach like that. Diskin, and he has it complete. And that is to number 81. That's Mann, Chris Mann, it was Moreland on the stop. And Charlie, you know, you, you mentioned Fred Miller's name uh, defensively, and that's a situation that really is just the opposite. Miller, there were six or seven defensive ends in spring ball uh, ahead of him. Everyone went down to injury. Two practices in a row, he found himself as the only healthy defensive end. I guess just decided, hey, he was going to win the position, and now he's got it. So, hey, playing in the, in the system is a part of uh, athletics. Man in motion. Third and six. Running again. Quarterback Diskin. I should say that was a first and ten play. And Diskin was running. Gector on the stop. The penalty flag is down. Downfield. All the way down at the 42-yard line. So let's see what this is about. It may be something that happened downfield. It was personal foul, and it's against Millersville. There's 57 seconds remaining in the ball game. And they're going to mark this one off against Millersville, but it's all academic now because Stroudsburg will definitely win this game to increase their record on the year to 6-1. They will remain unbeaten in the conference. They will be 4-0 in the conference. Millersville will fall to 3-2. That will keep East Stroudsburg on top of the Eastern Division. Diskin back to pass. Incomplete. And that was Bob Donlin, the sophomore from Exeter, Pennsylvania, who was the intended receiver. Turned around in time, but just couldn't hold on. Sanchez, I'll tell you, if you had to look at another MVP beside uh, Chris Hagen, you might look at Sanchez, who had, did not start, but did a great job on special teams, applying the pressure to the punter, blocked the punt, recovered a fumble. Adrian Sanchez. In fact, he had blocked a kick coming into today's game, so he has two for the year. Second down, 10 yards to go. This is man in motion. Diskin throws. Intercepted. Incomplete. Westmoreland was over there, but it's incomplete. Out of bounds on the far sideline. 32 seconds. The clock stops on the incompletion. It'll bring up a third down. 
And they're throwing the ball, leading 34 to Well, like 12. I say, you know, <laughs> Disk is a throwing quarterback. When you, <laughs> you, get, you still have to run your plays. And, he uh, did say he does not try to hold his second and third stringers down when they get a chance to play because they have to be efficient also. Sure, and hey, when, when these guys get a chance to get in and play, they want to play. They don't want to run plays designed to, for failure to keep the score close. You run what, you, what you're supposed to run. Straight ahead. They do run it this time to Tony Hall, the sophomore fullback. Chesco on the stop. 22 seconds. The clock remain, uh, running. Chesco, a freshman from Blakely, Pennsylvania, on the stop. The clock is down to 15 seconds. Still running. And it's fourth down. They may not even run this next play. As you see the clock continuing to run down. But it was a great afternoon for the East Stroudsburg fans, Coach Denny Dowds, and his Warriors. Not a good afternoon for that young man, Gene Carpenter, as his team loses their second conference game. They fall to three and four for the season. The two men congratulate each other in the center of the field. A lot of good sportsmanship here in the PSAC. The final there, you see, 34 to 12. East Stroudsburg over Millersville. And I'll tell you, we're going on to next week. East Stroudsburg takes on Westchester right here to be their homecoming, while Millersville will go against Cheney at home. And the executive producer of College Sports and NCAA, Kevin O'Malley. Today's coverage of the Millersville University, East Stroudsburg University game produced by Larry Cavallino, directed by Patty Tewitt, associate producer Bob Rowe, field technical manager Fred Dancero, technical director was Bruce Truitt, audio Joe Seback, and our broadcast associate Sarah Fisher. Fine job by all of our technicians and cameramen here. I'd like to thank you, gentlemen, ladies, for a fine job. Again, when you talk about what happened in today's ball game, 34 to 12 was the final. It was the 21 to nothing ball game in the first quarter. We talked about Baranek coming into the game, his key to passing, and the fact that Bishop and Benoit were his receivers, but he went right to the to the back coming out of the backfield on the first uh, touchdown, 72 yards to Walker. Well, it's been a big play offense all year long, and and we saw that in the first in the first quarter in the first half in general. And I don't care what you say, a lot of the option teams will tell you, well, this option offense is a good come from behind offense because it holds the linebackers and what have you, but there just aren't many option teams that are capable of overcoming big leads. You jump out 21 nothing in the first quarter and uh, before your offense has really had a chance to go get going and a game plan designed to control the ball and keep an explosive offense off the field uh, just kind of goes down the drain. That's what we saw today, although certainly uh, some consolation in the fact that in the second half, the Millersville defense pretty much controlled the, the ball game. It certainly did. They came up with the turnovers. Uh, that offense still wasn't able to take it into the end zone on occasion. Uh, but uh, certainly a pretty decent second half performance for Millersville. Well, uh, when you look at East Stroudsburg, they scored on four of their first five possessions, and uh, that was the reason for the dominance. Well, I don't think any there's any question either that the, the really the big play was a, a third and four situation where it looked like Baranek was going to get sacked at about his own 30. The score was 21 to 6 at the, at, at the time with about two minutes to play. Uh, they missed the sack. Baranek scrambled. They got, ended up with a big 30, 40 yard play. They took it in and scored, which believe it or not, coming into this ball game, um, East Stroudsburg had scored in four of their six ball games in the last minute of the first half. That's true. It, it happened again today, and it really turned out to be the key, uh, the key point of the ball game. It increased the lead 28 to six, and it was just too much for uh, Millersville to overcome. I'll also like to thank our very capable statistician, Carl Schlickspear, who's headed to Washington to do that Detroit-Washington game tomorrow. Bill Friel, our very capable spotter. We haven't seen Bill in about 10 years. We haven't worked together in about 10 years, and we brought him up from Philly to work with us today, and glad to see those guys. 
And don't forget, next, after this game, it'll be the Texas SMU game. And remember, tomorrow, National Football League action, the Detroit Lions and the Washington Redskins, beginning with the NFL today at 1230. Again, coming up next on CBS Sports, that battle between those two unbeaten teams, number two, Texas, ninth-ranked SMU. How do you like that game, Steve? You know SMU hasn't lost in 21 games. I, I think that Texas has been overshadowed by Nebraska pretty much all year. Things are starting to even out as Nebraska, uh, as teams, as the season goes on and teams play Nebraska a little bit tougher, now everybody's starting to give Texas a, a little more uh, attention, and uh, that's the best defense in the country in my mind. And I think also uh, Marcus Dupree probably overshadowed the good running backs that Texas has too. Uh, they've got a little bit of everything down there. Certainly, McElhaney has to be controlled in that ball game. It's a, a little more uh, diversified attack that SMU has, but uh, I'm going to have to take the Longhorns. You like Texas, huh? Yeah. Number uh, two in the country. Well, SMU hasn't lost for quite a while, 21 in a row, but uh, I think the streak that's going to end today is SMU's. Kind of a neutral turf, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if you're in Texas, who do you root for, right? Yeah. If you're a Texan, you, you're really torn between these two teams, I'll tell you. Of course, that whole conference is, you know, you're in Texas and that just about that whole conference, except for Arkansas. You mentioned Marcus Dupree. Yes. What do you think of his decision this week? Southern Mississippi. Hmm. Hey, I say you have to go where you're happy. That's and true. I'm going to tell you what, if you're a good player, you're going to be a good player whatever program you're in. Whether and, you get along with the coach or not, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, uh, I know one thing. I don't. I wouldn't want to play for a coach that ever publicly criticized me in the newspapers. Okay, remember tomorrow, National Football League action to Detroit Lions and the Washington Redskins beginning at 1230. NFL Today and coming up immediately following our contest here next on CBS Sports, a battle between those two undefeated teams. It's number two, Texas, and they're taking on ninth rated SMU. It's a Southwest Conference game. So for Steve Grody, this is Charlie Neal saying so long from Isla Martin Stadium in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. The final score today, East Stroudsburg 34, Millersville 12. This is been a presentation of CBS Sports.